कहते हमें खुदाम हमें खुदाम कहते
खुदाम कहते हैं हमें खुदाम कहते हैं हमें खुदा खुदाम कहते हैं हमें 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 हमें खुदाम कहते हैं 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 हमें खुदाम कहते हमें खुदाम कहते हैं हमें खुदाम कहते हैं हमें खुदाम कहते हैं हमें खुदाम कहते हैं हमें खुदाम हमें खुदाम कहते हैं 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 हमें
Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. And welcome to the National Football Tournament final day. We are here in Islamabad, the heart of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat. And before we get to the actual final um, match between East Region and Beit al Region, we are very lucky to be joined by two very special teams, uh, Gents FC and MTA International. These are two teams that are very dear to our brother, Sayyid Saleh Ahmed Shaheed Sahib, uh, who formed this Gents FC in 2007. And of course, he served in MTA uh, during his work. So these are the two teams. They're playing in the memory of Sayyid Saleh Ahmed Shaheed. Both teams, um, of course, remember uh, for what cause they're playing for, but I'm sure both teams want to win this game as well in the memory of Sayyid Saleh Ahmed Shaheed. Both teams are now walking out onto the pitch. Uh, MTA is captained by Muzammar Dogar Sahib, who's serving as a missionary. And Gents FC is captained by Adil Ahmed, who is the brother of Sayyid Saleh Ahmed Shaheed. Teams now are being introduced to Sadr Majlis Khadam and Amdi Abdul Qudus Arif Sahib and the father of Sayyid Sal Ahmed Shaheed Sahib Hashim Sahib. Um, these are, of course, after speaking to Adil Sahib, he told me that he managed to gather seven of the original players uh, that once this team was established, they were involved from the get go. And now he's meeting the MTA team. And these are all colleagues and friends of uh, Tale who. During, I remember in London, used to very actively and regularly hold football sessions. I still actually remember once uh, Talib brought this Gents FC to London, and when we were Jamia students, uh, we actually played a game against them, and it was a very competitive game, and I think we scored a goal in the last minute. But that was our uh, memory of playing this team, and Talib, I think, arranged like a whole tour for that team. They brought them to London, played different Jamaat teams. So it's um, going to be an interesting game today, actually. It should be both teams. I was actually speaking to both team captains before, they're both giving me a bit of excuses saying that they've not played for a long time and they're a bit stiff and they've not prepared much but like I said both teams are probably eager to win, no one wants to lose this game especially when you're playing in memory of someone that is very close to you. So I believe we're just having some team photographs now um, and then it should, shouldn't be long before we actually kick off. For those who are watching and are unaware uh, on the live stream, MTA is the team in blue and the Gents FC is the team in grey. Just to go through the lineups again um, for everyone's information. So for MTA, we have Fares Nasir playing up top, Nabil Ahmed playing left midfield, Abdul Halim centre midfield, Muzammil Dogar, the captain, playing right midfield, Salman Abbasi playing centre-back and Nusharan Sheed playing centre-back with Zulfikar Abbasi in goal. And for the Gents FC team, we've got Johnny B playing as striker. A bit of a sl slightly different formation that they've implemented. They've gone with two attacking midfielders with Tommy Howe and James Sutton. And then three at the back with um, Adam Bro playing left-back, Daniel Gillespie right-back, Adi Lemmed centre-back and Jamie Shave in goal. It's interesting to see um, what intensity the both teams start the game off. I mean, it's 27 degrees. It is very hot. Um, and sometimes starting fast can later on in the game uh, be a downside because you ultimately, to keep that momentum and tempo up, it's not easy. So let's see how both teams play. Normally, again, uh, in big games, both teams normally spend the first five, six minutes just to feel each other out, see get a touch of the ball, get, make sure each player gets a touch of the ball and um, see how it goes from there. The referee's blown to call the teams in now. MTA just doing their dua before the match. So it is a 40-minute a match, um, 20 minutes each half. Um, so like you say, I, I think there's a lot of time. Call them in. 
A lot of work went into the preparation of this uh, pitch. Um, I think they cordoned it off well in advance. They cut it, watered it regularly. As you know, the weather these days is very, very warm in the UK, and the pitches, if not watered and looked after, can be very hard. So they've done the Sitha Jusmani team, uh, mashallah, I think over the course of the last few weeks, they've done a, a lot of hard work in trying to make sure that the players have the best um, facilities to play on. Yeah, and I think not not only that, but I just think the whole day is you know it's it's really nice. We've got we've got a tuck shop, we've got um, stuff for the kids to do, play, play games, and it's really a family affair, and it just brings everyone together. I think it's it's really really nice. Referee Danish Nasser just going through last minute instructions for both the team captains. It's interesting watching football on this on this particular ground because it brings back so many memories of the Ishtama football that happened here. And we will come from the Ishtama ground, we will come onto the field, and all the football matches will be taking place here. So it really does roll back the years of um, football in Islam. But. Looks as though Gents FC might have won the toss and, and chose to kick off. We've got Johnny B, the number nine, that will be kicking the Gents team off. Referee just can't confirming with the keepers and, and we've begun. Oh, bit of a... Strange first touch there from the centre midfielder. Zumbledogger managed to keep it in. Oh, and Jen moving the ball around very, very swiftly. Johnny with a great cross and all. Zumbledogger running down the right wing now. A few step overs, two men on him, and wins a throw in for the MTA team. Oh, maybe not. It's, it's the gents team that have got the throw. It's not going to be easy to keep the ball on this uh, surface. It's a bit uneven ground. I know the grass is cut well, but generally when you play on grass, it's a much slower game compared to... Oh, mistake there. Fez Nasser with a shot. Oh, great save by the keeper. Great save. Johnny B with a touch there. And it's great. Ooh, left foot effort just wide. Both teams having chances there. Really quite intense game, I think. Both teams have come out the box looking to, to get a quick start. Keeper plays the ball out to the, to the right wing. That's a goal! No, that's Halim, who... I think it was a mistake by the Gents FC and Halim was given the ball just at the right time. He skipped past the player and slotted it in the bottom left corner. So 1-0 up again, but there's so much time. It's a long, long game. Let's see if um, MTA can keep the pressure on. Zomil Dogger on the ball again on the right wing, plays it into the middle. Great turn there. Oh, great through ball. Can he get there? Great save by the keeper there. I think Muzumbel Dogan may well have been injured. Seems as though it's a back injury. There's a collision with the keeper uh, and he seems to be holding his back. Let's see and hope that he's okay. A great game so far. Fantastic start and a fantastic pace that both teams have started on. Both attacking, both getting chances as well. So it could, could either go either way at the minute. The thing is, MTA's chances have come from Gents FC's mistakes. So it's um, again, you've got to capitalise, and that's what MTA did. But it's going to be very interesting to see if both teams can continue this pace. Uh, and I think whoever's fitter essentially should come out victorious. Oh, seems to be up on his feet now, Muzumil Dogger. Seems to be a bit winded, but he's okay. Halim, you can tell already in this game, is going to play a crucial role if MTA want to win this game. You can hear him as well. He keeps saying, let's keep it simple, keep it simple. And I think if you do that, if you play around Halim, 
then there's no reason why MTA shouldn't be victorious. And it's interesting because obviously gents have kind of gone with the two centre midfielders and Tony Howe and James Sutton, so you'd expect them to actually dominate in the centre of the park a little bit, but that's not actually the case. MTA seeing a lot more of the ball at the minute. Come, come on this way. This one. Both of us? So both of us using this, yeah. I've got, I've got some good like, spiel. Just, 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 just. No. And it's a goal kick to the Gents FC team now. It's interesting, when you play seven aside, when you play three at the back, ultimately your right and left back have to be wing backs. Um, otherwise, you're oh, isolated when you're at the top. Yep, yeah, I agree. Oh, you oh. skipped past one, but it's gone off. Yeah, the, these, if you're playing three at the back, Whoever's playing right and left back has to kind of overlap. Otherwise, Johnny B is going to have a difficult day by himself. Everyone. That's what we've see, seen actually with um, Adil Emetab just pushing up there, really testing the MTA defence. Adil Great ball in. Fares Nasser brings it down. Oh, just can get it under control there. Gents FC on the ball now with a bit more time. That is risky uh, for the keeper to do that, but he's managed to pull it off. Adil Longbo up front, looking for Johnny B there to make that run very comfortably taken by Zulu. MTA almost building uh, in confidence. Uh, you know, I think that goal's helped them. I think they they keep their shape. They're looking for the Gents FC to make mistakes. Got a corner now for the MTA team. Hey, it's short and oh, very bad. Intercepted there by Johnny B. Johnny, 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 win a free kick. Taken early by Johnny B out to Ardil. Just can't get it under control. I have to say, how's your touch? Switched out. By MTA to the left, back again, just controlling the ball now, and there's slowing no need, the pace down. There's no need for them to rush, they want to keep the ball, keep it simple, frustrate the opposition. Almost got to suck the life out of them, you know, in this heat as well. Oh, the mistake there, and that's, that's the problem though, when you, you know, when you slow the game down too much, you uh, take complacency. Yeah, absolutely. for handball but actually the referee told him to play on very difficult short distance difficult to judge that back to the keeper there orders from the captain was on Mildogra Saab saying start again recycle I feel, I feel like this, this formation is killing Gents FC I think they should go back to that kind of old wings. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go, go, go to a back two and go three in midfield. No, 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 no. That way, I think they'll have more luck going forward. Great effort there by MTA, just wide. Gents FC having the goal, goal kick now. Both teams seem like they've got a mistake in them. They're giving the ball away, actually. You're a bit sloppy passes here. And then, like you say, I think both teams were saying um, before the match started they haven't really played that much or played that often together. I think that's been seen. great, great ball in there by the MTA team. Both teams are looking to go along. I think on a number of occasions I've seen both teams just looking for their target man. In that case, it was Mazamal Doga that they're looking for, but the defender intercepted. I feel like the Gents team is really, really pinned back at the moment, though. They're struggling to just get out there and half at the minute. MTA dominating the game, dominating possession. The B Lemmers on the ball at the back. Loads of time. Brings the ball forward. 
Someone seems to be okay after that knock he took. Oh, great play there by MTA. A little one to Outram Zommel on the right wing. Brings it onto his left foot. Advantage played by the referee, I think, there. Again, MTA just controlling the game, really, controlling the pace of the game on the ball, passing it around. The NFC at the moment have a back four. I don't know if you. This, yeah. Gents now have a chance to break on the ball, get everyone on the ball, we build the game up, but they, they go long and intercepted by MTA. Oh, touch. Oh, great effort there. That was a by the goalkeeper. The great effort there by James Sutton on his right foot. But brilliant save by the goalkeeper. And that's really the first real chance, I would say, Jensen yeah, had. Yeah, really. it was a moment of brilliance. I mean, he took a great touch, uh, beat his player and took a shot. Gents with a bit more time on the ball now. Chance to build something up. No, 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 no. A bit of a mistake there by James Sutton. And the ball falls to MTA again. <laughs> Gents not really pressing that high, and I think, like you said, it's a hot day today as well. Ooh, MTA go long, looking for them. Picked up by the goalkeeper. Out to Adil. Oh, he's got a lot of time now. Let's see what we can do. Adil waiting for that run, just not, not happening. Manages to find Johnny B. And a great strike with his left foot out for a corner. And Gents really finding themselves into this game now, really. I think they're starting to get into it a bit more, getting the ball a bit more. First corner for, for Jens, going to be taken by Adil, Adil Emmett Saab. I think there's another ball in the goal, so just getting rid of that ball and uh, Adil will retake that corner. See, he's quite tall, quite powerful. I'm surprised he took the corner. MTA on the ball once again, just passing it around to the back, working it through the thirds, intercepted by the Lemmed. Oh, there you go. Is it? Even though... Uh, oh, oh, goal! Oh, there you go. go. What a goal. Great play there by um, Johnny. I was about to say, you wriggled his way through three or four people. I just opened up for him. Just opened up for him and he took a shot. Again, I think with, with the formation that they're playing at the moment, it's going to take a moment of magic like that, where he just got the ball. It seemed like he lost it, but again, he kept fighting, kept going, and eventually took a shot and it just went bottom left corner. Great goal. 1-1, one, one, game on. Oh, that was a bad touch by Muzammil, otherwise he was in. Clear on goal. Gents FC on the ball now, out to Johnny B on the right wing. And I feel that goal's given them confidence because now they're coming forward almost with purpose. But that final pass needs to be there. It's interesting now Muzammil's gone into the striker position and Fires has come more up to the right. We're just changing things up now, Mulan Kia. Let's see if it comes to any success. Taking so oh, great football there, just one triangle, touch passing. Small triangles to got him out of trouble. Almost pepesque. <laughs> That's a throw in for, for MTA. Come 
Long throw in into the box. Zomildogan has it on. Oh, great save by the goalkeeper. Remind me of Rory Dillap, <laughs> that throw. Ah, poor touch there by Johnny. Yeah, Noshulwan was on his toes. Didn't give him any time to take a touch and uh, it's a ball to empty it. Throwing. You just well, tell the game's slowing down now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Everyone's yeah, yeah. tired and feeling it, I think, everyone. B Lemon's on the ball now. <laughs> MTA building up again. Fares Nasser on the ball. Zamil Dogger with a one touch pass. Back to Fares. Fares sprays it out to the left to MTA. MTA with a cross in. Oh! Zamil Dogger there with a great, great effort. Great half chance. Just couldn't get enough contact on the ball. Gents with a break now. Well covered and watched by MTA. A lot of time at the back now for MTA. The wheel on the ball now on the left wing. Plays it back to defence. MTA again just on the ball, controlling it, slowing the tempo now. MTA battling it out. Play it back to the back. Great play there by MTA, just skips past the player. Zumbledogger playing it back. There's Nasser on the ball, looking for options, scanning the pitch. Crossing by MTA, Zumbledogger on the ball, on his left foot, takes it. Oh, just couldn't divert it in there. that long ball again and uh, so we've got a replay actually to show you now of the previous event that occurred Jens now with the goal kick plays it out to Ardin oh, there's a substitution now this is uh, Halim has come off for Mudabur Din Sahib. Uh, it's an interesting substitution. Let's see where Mudabur, which position he slips into. So Mudabur has come into centre mid position. Mudabur Din, someone who has a lot of legs, I would say, able to track his opponent, maybe eliminate that threat of um, James Sutton in the middle, causing MTA a little bit of an issue. Obviously scored that earlier goal as well, just running through the middle. Adil intercepts there for Jens, goes for effort. Wow, wayward effort. Someone's car there as well being damaged. Uh, that's an apology due by Adil, I'm sure. Whoever's car that is, I'm sure he's sorry. But if you don't shoot, you don't score. Thing is, I know Adil personally, I don't know why he took the shot there. I've never seen him score <laughs> shooting like that. Thing is that Islamabad lights yeah. lit <laughs> MTA having a lot of the ball now. Um, oh, very late challenge there by the Gents team. 
think Jensen are getting slightly frustrated there, just not being able to get on the ball. No hard feelings, I think everything seems to be fine. Like I said, most of this game has been played in the Gents FC half. Uh, MTA winning the ball back quite high up. And that's where they've looked like they might get a goal. But again, uh, then Gents, when they get the ball on the counter, have caused problems. MTA trying to go long and look for Muzumbel Dogo there, but just couldn't really make anything of it. Goal kick for Gents. Gents keeper looking to go long. Intercepted was on longer turns on his left foot. Unlucky effort there, just took a deflection for corner for MTA. Nabil Ahmed taking the corner for MTA. Johnny B on the ball on the right wing there, wins the corner for the Gents. Sorry, wins the throw in. I think it's an MTA throw in actually. The Beal almost looked like he took a shot from, from the, the corner. corner and um, the keeper was uh, awake to that threat. Long throw in again from MTA. Oh, what a goal! Great goal by Nabil Ahmed for MTA to make it 2 1. Wow. That was almost. Out of Stokes book. <laughs> Long throwing from Rulli Dilat, but in this case it was Salman who beautiful for great right head and the Bills at Tom's corner. 2 1 MTA. You can tell they've been working on that as well. I think everyone knew what they were doing there. Salman knew who to aim for. Great bit of skill there by the B, just to skip past it. And hold it. Superman with another long throw, and I think they're going to maybe try a similar, similar trick again. Long throw into the box. Nabil, oh, almost. Fires on the ball now on his left foot, plays it back out. Rush with the shot and just defended well by, by the Gents team. And Johnny on the break here, getting well covered by Mudabir D. Great composer. Gents win, great pressure by, by Johnny B there to, to win the throw in for the Gents team. Not a lot of time left in this half as well, can they? Get one back. Oh, great effort there. Great effort by James Sutton on his left foot this time. So he's both footed, um, but just couldn't, couldn't, couldn't make the most of that opportunity. So, so it's half time now. Um, teams will get, get, get a drink in.
Now. Oh, there's already a bit more intensity about the game. Out to the beat on the. Oh, <laughs> MTA controlling the ball again, just passing it around, getting into the game. Seems there's been a few changes. One well. Mubar is MD yeah. coming on at uh, right back. He's come on for Nabil, I believe. No, Nabil is still on. No, Sherwan has come off for Mubaris. Very risky. Oh, 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 that was a bit of a harsh challenge there. Didn't get the ball. Referee gives a free kick to the gents. As much as Salman is putting his hands up, he knew exactly what he's doing there. But you had to do that to make sure it wasn't a one-on-one -on -one chance. Had to take one for the team there, Salman. Johnny B. Johnny B lining up the free kick now. I think he's gonna gonna take a shot. MTA putting pressure on the goalkeeper as well. Left foot strike off the line. Great strike there. Salman with a great great save off the line there. Positive start by Jens FC uh, come up with a real intent to get back in the game. Gents FC on the ball now. Gents FC going long but cut out by Mubarak's MD there. 
being challenged. Oh, and, and Gents on the ball with a chance here. Uh oh. Comes to nothing again. And a quick, quick break now from MTA. Intercepted by the Gents team. Nabil here on the right wing, crosses it in. Johnny B on the ball here, and he's, he's got a good left foot. Great defending from MTA there. Great defending from MTA there. Nabil on the ball down the right wing. Cuts in onto his left foot, looking for that pass, looking for options. Out to Muzumil Dogger, who lines up a shot on his left foot. Boy, off the crossbar. Great attempt there by Muzumil Dogger. Great strike that, wasn't it? Amazing strike by Muzumil Dogger, rolling back the years. A couple of years ago, I would have said a 100% goal. Gents FC with the goal. Goal kick now. Out to the right wing. Bit of time on the ball for Gents. Johnny B trying to get past Salman does well to win win the gents a throw in. Johnny B taking the throw in. It's a quick one. And the Bilema just ushers um, the gents team out there. Adil there, who's going to take the throw in now. Some substitutions being made by the MTA team. Faiz um, Nasser coming on for Nabil Ahmed. Adil with the throw in, a long throw in again. Johnny just couldn't get his head to that. And the ball goes out to a throw in for Gents. Another long throw in now. I oh, know they go short this time. Great switch of play there by MTA. Fires on the ball, looking for options. Oh, picks out a great pass there. Bit of time on his right foot. Couldn't. Mudabir squares it. Dog. Oh, Muzambil Dog going to hit the bar again. And a goal. MTA finally managed to just slot that in. Bottom right corner. Great piece of play by MTA there. Baleem with a great goal there, great composure to make it 3-1 to MTA. MTA I think looking to make some more changes now. Maybe there's a name to sl slow the game down slightly as well just after that goal. Johnny kicks off. Adil on the ball there in the back, looking for options. Gents have to step up their game now. They need a goal, really. Another goal for MTA in this game is pretty much over. Oh, unlucky there. Great cross by, by James, but just couldn't. Johnny just couldn't get there. Goal kick now for MTA. No real rush from MTA either now. Out to the right to Mubarez MD. Switch of play there to Salman down the left. Again, playing it across the back line. Saman just saying to slow things down and an MTA in no rush to really push forward at this point. Just playing it from side to side. Saman looking for Fies. Fies with a cross there, but intercepted well read by the keeper. The keeper plays it to looking, looking for the options. Can't really find any options at the moment, but goes long. Straight to the MTA goalkeeper. Again, MTA goalkeeper just rolls it out to Mubariz and they just recycle, keep the ball, no real rush. Intercepted there by James Sutton, just couldn't make more of, of the chance there, just, just runs out for a throw in. Mubariz throws it back into Salman. Oh, m mistake there by Salman. But well recovered by Mubariz there, but picked up by Johnny. Johnny works an angle for the shot off the post. Great effort there by Johnny. What an attempt. 
Mudubber on the ball now on the left wing. Looking for options. Plays the easy ball into Muzumil. Back to uh, Mudubber. Mudubber on the left side now. Out to Faiz. Faiz back to Salman. Salman into Muzumil. Muzumil out to Mubariz. And actually, the MTA boys are looking very good. Just passing it around. Great attempt of switch of play there, intercepted by Gents. But Salman, ever composed, on the ball again, just looking for options. Plays the ball out to Muzumil. Salman, ball to Faiz. Actually really nice to watch these just short, crisp passing. Gents getting slightly frustrated here, they just can't seem to get on the ball. Out to Mudabir again. Mudabir just puts the, the ball into a danger area, but it falls to the keeper. Goalkeeper out to the Johnny B on the left wing. Tries to run past Mubariz, but manages to do so as well. Looking for options in the middle. Oh, I don't know how he managed to miss that, to be honest. Was under a bit of pressure from the MTA boys, but really should have been a goal. The gents need to take these chances if they want to get back in this game. Zulfikar just looking for his options again. No rush again to take it. MTA just controlling the pace of the game. Zulfikar plays it out to Mubariz, down the right, attacking down the right wing, the ball goes out, the gents throw in. How do we know when they're going to show a replay? Johnny B there. Gents with a free kick. They try to go long. Comes to nothing. Goal kick to MTA. Gents on the ball now. Out to Johnny. Well, well recovered by Mudabuddin there. Great tackle. Salman with the outside of the boot pass to Faiz. Just can't control the ball. Hits his hand. Gents free kick. Adil there. Goes for another shot. Another attempt by Adil. Much better effort, has to be said. But straight into the keeper's hand. Out to Salman. Sprays it out there. Running down the right wing with a cross. Mudabir with, with a bit of time here on the ball, but can't get it under. Great interception by Johnny B there. Gents, with a bit of time on the ball now, I think MTA are, are starting to feel the effects of, of this weather and, and the game. Can Gents get back into the game now? Pace of the game has really slowed down now, but this would suit MTA as they're three out now. Fires takes a touch, beats his man, should go across goal, try to chip it. an own goal but goes out for another corner
cheaply given the way Gents have the ball now. Beaten one, beaten two. He's on the attack. One more man to beat. Let's see if this can come to a goal. What a goal. What a goal. Classic counter attack goal. Gents are back in the game. Moment of brilliance there by James. And, uh, you know, he beat one man easily, beat the second man easily down the line. And very much unselfishly found a pass and it converted into a goal. Game on. That should really give Jets FC the confidence to come back and get one more goal to go even in this game. Oh, beautiful chance. What a goal. What a goal. Halim just broke through the defense, ran through the whole team, took a shot, keeper saved it, and Muzammal was in the right place at the right time to make it 4-2 to MTA. That one goal now really probably sucks the energy out of Gents FC. They just scored an amazing goal. They got back into the game and MTA just got one back straight away. Let's see what Gents FC can do. Again, a bit of frustration trying to shoot straight off the kickoff with no success now. It's interesting because MTA really now just need to slow the game down, suck the life out of Gents FC, and Gents FC really need to kind of win the ball back as quick as possible and get it forward as soon as possible. Halim holding onto the ball really well here, beating one, beating two, fives, and again, reset, well done. MTA, so all they need to do is keep the ball, slow it down, and try not to make any mistakes in the middle. Oh, very nicely just passed in the build there. Scored a the ball. Let's see if he can make anything out of this. Unlucky with the shot. Next goal is crucial. If Jets FC manage to get another goal, then it will be game back on. But if MTA can keep the ball and even get one more, Muzaman's on through and go, or oh, the touch let him down there. Otherwise, very good pass by Faiz Nasir. Mudabba is now slot back into the defence. Nosherwan and Mudabba are playing two at the back, with Halim playing centre mid, Nabil on one wing, Faiz on one wing, and Muzammal has gone up top. Halim got a lot of space in the middle by himself, but Zulfi wasn't able to pick him. Gents FC with the ball, moving it forward, Abdi's now got the ball, let's see, goes to the middle, unable, it's a bad touch, he's unable to do anything with that, but again the ball is back in the possession of Gents FC. Noshirwan dealing with the ball in the air, Muzammal's first touch has let him down again. Oh, he's picked out. Muzammal with a lot of space in the middle. Giving it to Halim. Halim's passed it on to Faiz. Back to Halim. Let's see what Halim can do. Beats one. Unable to beat the second. And now Gents FC have the ball. Gents FC were unable to pick up. Adil Adil was making the run. Oh, here we go. It is two on two. Oh, he's beaten his man. Let's see if he can finish. Oh, unlucky. Great challenge by Nabil there. Otherwise, I'm certain that would have been a goal. It's a corner to Gents FC. If they can make this count, then it will make the last five, ten minutes of this game very interesting. Again, Halim just in the right place at the right time there, otherwise that was going into the bottom corner. Not long left now in this game, about two minutes to go. 
MTA with the throw in. Zomeldogger with a great turn there. Beats one. Can he beat the second? He does. Cuts in on his left foot and a strike. Just wide. Great. Great save there by the Gents keeper. MTA at the back. Helene with a with a shot on the half turn there and um, wins MTA another corner. MTA 4-2 up at the moment. Not long to le left to go in the game now. Lean with the corner. Out swinger, but no one's there. Out to Mudabu. Fires with a great chest there, great touch. Holds his man off. Great show of strength. And James Sutton there on the ball, driving forward from the midfield. Finds a great pass down the left wing there. Well intercepted. Oh. And that's a corner to, to Gents. I have to say, James is having a fantastic game today. Probably one of the most uh, dangerous players for the Gents team at the minute. Corner to be taken now by James. Fires one in, but Adil just couldn't get there. And that goes off for, for another goal kick to the MTA. Goal kick to the Gents team now. Not long to go in this game at all. We're into extra time. MTA with a great head there, but Johnny picks up the second ball. MTA just clear their lines. Nabil with a great piece of skill there. Gliding past the Gents players, pulls it back in. Zambil with another effort, this time with the left foot, just not, not his day today. Zulfi's not done much wrong today. He's uh, turned up when required and um, he's had a, the right support from his defenders whenever there's been a um, set piece. Ball's gone off now. Players an injury down. there. I think Salman may have just kicked the um, Adil studs. Felt that one. Both players down at the moment. Pointing to his ankle, which is Salman is at the moment. I think that's uh, Noshirwan on the floor. Uh, yeah, it's Noshirwan. Let's hope he's okay. It's actually been a great game, though. Great spirits. Some of the gents players actually just on the floor at the moment, just with fatigue, I think, more than anything. I think both teams have felt, felt the game. Um, but 4-2 four, four, at the moment, and it's been played in, in great spirits. So what's the next thing that we have planned after this, Bertab, on the, on the schedule? Well, I believe the next match will be between the champions of the KFL South, um, who will be playing the champions of the KFL North. KFL stands for Khudam Football League, uh, and for the last few years they've changed the format in the sense that normally we used to play as regions and Qiyadas, but for the last few years they've started, um, had the draft system where captains and managers will pick a, uh, a Khadim who was put into the draft and then those, your team essentially with 10 to 12 Khudam who may not be from your region, you may not know who they are, <coughs> but they represent and now 
the winners of the South will play the winners of the North. We're just going to go to a replay of Dali. Um, I mean, uh, sorry, Adil. And that was the last attempt on goal that the Gents FC had. And as you can see in the replay, Zulfikar had no trouble in making sure that that was not a goal. J James just loses out the ball there to uh, Nabil, but manages to win it back and spray it out to the right wing now. Daniel on the ball at the moment. Beats one. Mudabur manages to keep it on for, for MTA, but back to the gents team who goes out for a MTA throw in. Yeah, just to touch on um, what you were saying, but uh, with regards to the uh, KFL Super Cup. James Sutton on the ball with an attempt. Oh, keeper didn't even move there, to be honest. Very, very close. And that's the end of the match. Uh, very competitive, great spirits. And um, it ends MTA 4, Gents 2. Just one, two. So you've just so you've just joined us up by MTA versus the Jets FC and I'm joined by Adil and Saab. Adil Saab, um, it's almost bittersweet in the sense that you lost the game, but in the spirit that it was played and in the remembrance of why we were playing this game, it was a win-win for both teams. But how was that game for your team? It was hard work. <laughs> uh, we unfortunately didn't have any subs. And, um, you know, I think that you could tell on the pitch that made the difference. MT had the legs on us. They were rotating regularly. 
Uh, I'm not, not saying, taking anything away from their performance. They played really well um, playing out from the back and um, their forwards, you know, were tricky, hard to get a hold of. I think we turned it on in the second half a little bit and we definitely had our opportunities and um, unfortunately just couldn't take them today. If you could introduce your teammate with you as well. So this is Adam Bruff. He is the current manager of the Gents FC and was um, ex-captain before he handed it over to me um, at the start of this weekend. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Adam. How has this whole experience been for yourself? It's been, uh, it's been great, honestly. You know, um, being able to come here for Tale, who was such a big part of our lives, and, and creating this team, and then being able to look after the team for so long as captain after he handed it to me, and then pass it. I've been able to pass it back to the family to Adil. So it's been sort of, sort of a, the end of you know an era in a way, um, and it's a really nice way to cap it off, even though we lost. But that's kind of what we've done from the start, really. So <laughs> even when Tale formed us, we were always losing. So yeah, yeah it, 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 it's it's. Uh, it's as it should be. <laughs> well, like I said, it was an interesting. One question I wanted to ask, how come you played three at the back from the beginning? Um, because we didn't have your guidance at that point. <laughs> he came to me in the second half and uh, gave us a few words of wisdom, and then I think that actually made a little bit of difference, so I appreciate that, Zakla. No, no problem. We were rooting for both of Dali's teams. Someone asked me, who would you want to win? I said Dali's team, but yeah. both of our Dali's team. So it was a win-win situation for both teams. We're now just going to shortly go to a presentation that will be taking place on stage. So join us back for that live presentation. <laughs> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولكل أينما تكونوا يأتي بكم الله جميعا إن 
The verse recited before you is from the Holy Quran, chapter 2, verse 149, and the English translation is as follows. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, ever merciful. And everyone has a goal which dominates him. Vie then with one another in good works. Wherever you be, Allah will bring you all together. Surely Allah has the power to do all that he wills. If I could request Adil Ahmed Sahib to come and give an introduction of uh, this match and the gents. Um, a little bit of information about the Gents FC. I'm sure a lot of people are asking who we are and what we're about. In 2007, Sayyid Talay Ahmed Shaheed created a, a seven-a-side football team with his school friends while still studying for his GCSEs. Um, since then, they've played together for years. And through that, um, although initially it was for social reasons and to stay fit and active and play um, football, it then became something much bigger and greater than that. Um, everyone who played for the Gents had an attachment to uh, our Jamaat and our family as well. Um, the Gents gave an avenue for the Bleak, but also for um, deeper developed connections with the local community in Hartlepool. Many of the players who are sat there t uh, today in the, in the front row have um, attended many Jamaat events and frankly wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Dali initiating the Gents FC. Um, Alhamdulillah, it's been um, 10 years <laughs> since we last played, but we recently reformed the team because we wanted to do something in memory of Dali and to keep his legacy alive, especially from a sporting front because he was such an active and fit person, Alhamdulillah. Um, so like I said, we got together and um, we made plans and it just so happened that it fell upon the weekend of the NFT and KFL finals, which I believe is a true blessing. Uh, and we've had the great opportunity to play here today and, and we really appreciate it. As you may have seen, we all got Dalla's name um, onto our kits on the back. And uh, I believe he would have been very proud and very happy um, to have seen us uh, all get here together today and play the, the game to a good standard and in a, in a very good spirit, spirit as, uh, as well, which was the key thing. Jazakallah. Jazakallah, um, Jazakallah. If I request Daniel Khan Saib to come and announce the awards. Assalamu alaikum wa there's actually um, is, is one award, which is the shield for this initiative, um, the Sayyid Talay Ahmed Memorial Shield. And inshallah, ta'ala, um, this shield, uh, I think the intention is to repeat this um, tournament uh, or the, the matches every year. So if I can just uh, present this to the winning team for this year, if the captain can maybe um, come to the front. from MTA team. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly.
Jazak Mullah Sin Jazak. Um, we'll conclude this session. If I can request um, uh, uh, Hashim Akbar Sahib, Sayyid Dali Shaheed Sahib's father, to say a few words um, and then lead us in silent prayer, as is the customary practice of the Jamaat. Um, Hashim Sahib. Uh, gents, thank you very much for uh, giving us this opportunity, especially to the family of Thale. Uh, and we have been, uh, he's been here with me all the time, seeing you uh, over here. I know that uh, from a very young age, uh, he was with you. And if you remember, I don't know whether he used to say to you or not, but since his childhood, he used to say to his parents, I'm a legend. <laughs> and you'll be able to appreciate uh, this sense of humor of his, but this is how much it has come true today. Um, once again, thank you very much for coming all the way. I hope we see you over and over again and stay in touch. Zakamullah. Um, we'll do silent prayers now and you can join us as you like. Amin. Thank you very much. Sakmullah. Um, are there announcements? If we can quickly tell us what the program is. So, in the next part of the program, is uh, everyone will be making their way to the mosque for um, uh, Azr prayer. And then, after straight after namaz, the next fixture will start, which is the KFL Super Cup fixture. Um, and we will just request everyone to make their way back to the pitch once uh, namaz has finished. Jazakallah.
back. We're now joined by two of the MTA players, Noshirwan Sahib and Fire Sahib. Assalamualaikum, gents. Firstly, Mubarako, congratulations on your win. How are you guys feeling after that game? Assalamualaikum, Assalamualaikum, Jazakallah. I think it's, a, it's an honour for us all, um, not just to be part of the match, um, but overall the cause why we're here. Winning the match is just an addition, a benefit that we, we came out, played and we won the match. Either way, had we lost as well, we would have still had the same uh, memories that we had today. We would have come together, we would have supported them and we would have uh, been able to remember the greater cause why you're here. And um, it's just the beloved Hazul's guidance as well and his prayers, uh, the reason why we're able to come together here today. And, and of course, um, these, the gents, gents team that have come, they've travelled a lot over the weekend and, uh, and I'm sure they've enjoyed it. They've got to see another side and they've, got, they've learned a lot and they've, I think they've benefited greatly from this exhibition match. And it, in all, it's because of the legend Sayyid Tali Ahmed Shahid Sahib, like his father just mentioned earlier. Faisal, what was your preparations for, like, um, for this, this match? Mashla MTA team played really well. It seemed like you've been playing uh, or you've played before. Um, so what preparations did you make for this game? I think we, we, didn't, as in we didn't make any preparations necessarily, but we just recently played a tournament together, which was the International Ahmadiyya Tournament, uh, where we, most of us represented Fazl Um And uh, we did a lot of training for that, but in particular for this match, we didn't, apart from buying the kits together and making a WhatsApp group, uh, we, didn't, we didn't really uh, do any you know, preparation. But the, everyone in the team, was uh, really humbled to be part of this tournament because, or part of this match, um, because it, it kind of reminds us what Sayyid Talay Ahmed Shaheed sort of left, you know, the legacy that he left behind for us. And this match was just a football match, but more importantly, it was a reminder to all the Khudam, to all the people who are watching that, um, you know, all the qualities that Sayyid Talay Ahmed Shaheed had, we should try to adopt them and we should try to make them, you know, a, a part of our life so that we can also reach the, the heights of, of, of the expectations of our beloved as well. No, thank you, gentlemen. Again, congratulations. It's, uh, your shirts are very beautiful as well. I don't know if you can zoom into them. It says, in loving memory of our dear brother, Sayyid Talih Ahmed Shaheed, 1990 to 2021. So with that, we're now going to go to our namaz break, but do come back. We are scheduled for the next match just after 6 p.m., in which it will be the KFL champions of the North versus the KFL champions of the South. See you soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
हमें खुदाम कहते हैं 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 हमें खुदा कहते हैं हमें खुदाम कहते हैं
Welcome back to the National Football Tournament Finals Day. You can see it's an amazing environment. Uh, the weather is nice, the turnout is nice, the tuck shop is very busy. Khudam al have opened their tuck shop and you can see we're all benefiting from that as well. But now we will be proceeding to the KFL Finals, the Super Cup between the champions of KFL South, which is Denmark, I believe. Morocco, I'm sorry for all the Morocco fans watching, and the champions of KFL North, which is Barcelona. And I'm joined by both chairmen of KFL South, Daniel Saab, and KFL North, Arsalan Saheb. And I'll start with Daniel Saab. Daniel Saab, as thank you for joining us. So if you could just tell us, give us a brief background about KFL and the new format to KFL as it being the second season that it's running. Of course. So KFL previously, the way we used to organise it was based off Gadot. So it was essentially an inter gadet league uh, based, in, based in London, um, uh, and um, we just the local gathers would get together. What we wanted to change, we wanted to change, um, the, you know, and come out the norm. And what we introduced was a draft system. So very similar to the NBA style, where you have your captains, managers, and you go around through a pick. You pick your players, and then obviously you know the better players that people already know they're the popular players. Um, so we go around by round. We draft players, and we select a squad of 12 to, to 15. And um, essentially the, the, the idea behind this was um, to incorporate more brotherhood, to incorporate those that maybe were playing in Gaudets and they weren't getting the chance to come through or they were playing in their own little groups. We wanted to break the norm and you know, say, you, know, you play for that Gaudet, you play for, let's bring them all together, let's increase the brotherhood. And um, yeah, and I think Alhamdulillah, a second year running now, it's been very successful. Uh, first season, uh, first uh, first year, we had um, two divisions. In fact, we had that much interest, and then second year we decided to do one whole division with uh, more teams. And I mean, the competitive spirit was amazing. It's probably one of the best finals we've seen in in Khudam football, where Morocco were two 0 down in the dying minutes, and they came back two two, and they took it in penalties. Wow, exciting stuff. And uh, Arslan Saab, how about yourself in KFL North? I know in North you have more challenges in terms of your distances that you are apart. So how has this league been for you guys? Yeah, Asalaamu Alaikum. So like you said, our distance, the, the regions we cover is much bigger than in the South. So um, it starts from Hearts all the way to Scotland. In between you've got East Midlands, West Midlands, Yorkshire, Northeast, uh, Darul Aman and Northwest. So for us it's slightly harder to bring them all together for every uh, group game. So in the South they have a group game every uh, week where they get together. Whereas with us we do the group stages within the regions and then the top team from each region then comes together at one location where we um, play them all together so we create another group and uh, obviously the final and now the finalist, uh, the winner, uh, Barcelona United, will be playing here inshallah today. So I know you're both part of the SEDG team, you're both actually colleagues as well and at the same time competitors because you're both representing a league but how has your preparation been for this event? I can see there's a lot of work that's been in, gone into the ground preparation. I see after every match you're watering it so if you could just tell us a bit about how much, how, how you guys prepared for this actual event. So initially we, uh, the, the plan started after we had our uh, actual NFT in uh, Watford FC training ground about two weeks ago. And from that point onwards, we knew, we came and inspected the ground and we knew the ground was very hard, it was very dry, we've, we've had a lot of hot weather. Um, so the main priority was to, you know, make sure the pitch is playable and um, to minimise injuries with the hard ground. Um, so for the past about week and a half or so, we've been coming regularly, making sure the pitch is being watered 24-7, round the clock, to soften up the ground, to make the surface as pristine as possible. And um, yeah, it's been hard work, especially working in the heat. Um, so obviously there's been a lot of prep going on uh, in weeks and uh, in, in the weekend uh, before. But um, I mean, since yesterday, since Friday, uh, I mean, the Vakari Mal team have been, have been at it with, uh, with us, setting up all the gazebos and, you know, and then we, we had to do the pitch marking ourselves. So it was a lot, it was a lot to do behind the scenes. But Alhamdulillah, the boys um, come together as Jamaat, we come together and we managed to pull it through. I believe now we're also joined by the captains. Where are the captains? If I could just have the captains join us in. So from Darul Oman region. So this is Barcelona, captain of yes. Barcelona, Barcelona Salaam and captain, uh, captain of Morocco, Salaam So how has this new format for KFL been for you up north? No, it's been great. Uh, it's been great. We, we set up a few months ago. Um, there's been a lot of football in the north recently as well with the first international team. So we managed to form Al Furqa and a lot of the boys have st stayed together with that and you know we formed different uh, teams in the Qiyadat. Um, we went on to the regional sort of match day as well. Um, I think the South had a similar one and then now we're here. So, so. And you, no injuries, everyone's fit today? 
there's always injuries. You got to play through injuries. No one's no one's 100. percent I'm sure these guys aren't either. Um, but Alhamdulillah, we're in a good good place. And what do you say? You represent Morocco. Uh, how's the KFL been for you guys? You, uh, Daniel Sab told us of the very exciting final where you're two 0 down, and in the last few minutes you brought it back and won in penalties. But in general, how's the KFL been for you? No, I think the SEJ team um, smashed it. Did it really well. Um, I think it was over four weeks, and really well organised. Loved the venue, the equipment. It was all great, and um, yeah, we really loved it. And before you guys go, I've got to ask you: What's your predictions for today's match? A win, inshallah. Any anything specific? Nothing specific. A win. I'm sure it'll be a competitive game, but we'll give our best, inshallah. We'll get the win. And would you? I think a two-nil win, inshallah. For okay. Morocco. So both teams think that they're going to win. We're now going to head off to a small break. And when you join us back, you will be joined on live commentary for the KFL Super Cup final between Morocco and Barcelona. <laughs> Welcome back to the um, NFT final. So um, now we have for you the KFL Super Cup. Um, the two teams on show now is uh, a team called Morocco. Um, so essentially the way it worked in the south was that um, there was a draft and um, each of the teams that were involved in the tournament um, got assigned an international team. Um, so the team that made it to the final are Morocco. And then for the north, um, we have Barcelona United. So a similar setup in the north as well with the draft system. Um, with the north system, we had the club teams rather than international teams. And for the south, we had the um, international teams. So I'm just going to go through, run through the, the teams now, the two formations. So for Morocco, they've opted for a... 2-3-1 formation with uh, Farhad Ahmed in goal, Mohamed Adain centre-back along with Danish Tahir. And then we've got Tala Mahmoud on the right wing, Waji Ur-Rahman, who is the captain for Morocco um, in the middle, and then Labib Ahmed on the left wing with Badr Nasser leaving, leading the line up top. And for Barcelona United, we have Rayan Hussein up top, Aman Hussein on the right wing, Juned Hussein in the middle, Reis Hussein down the left wing, Wasim Hussein um, playing left back, and Rafi Khan, um, who's the captain for Barcelona United, playing right back, and Ali Abid in goal. The two teams just going through their drills, warming up, stretches, getting loose, um, and, and we should, inshallah, kick off shortly. I'm joined today by um, Kudus Saab. Kudus, Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum, Waalaikum Assalam. How's it going? Yeah, Alhamdulillah, good, good. So um, we just had the, the first match. It was an exhibition match versus Gents, um, FC versus MTA. And, and now's the, the KFL Super Cup. So it's the winners of KFL South versus the winners of KFL North. What, what, what do you think? What are the predictions? Uh, this is the uh, expected and... Uh, a much-awaited game between South and North, so it's going to be very competitive. We're all looking forward to this game, and inshallah, I think everyone will enjoy it. I can't make any predictions yet, but, but we'll, uh, inshallah, soon see. Yeah, 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 no, inshallah, it should be a good game. Played in good spirits. Sadr Saab just uh, 
Sadr Saab Khudam Lemdia UK just briefing the two teams before before the start and uh, we should kick off shortly just going through final stretches and instructions two teams just doing dua now before before kick off Lusa, you've been involved in various finals yourself. I'm kind of, what's going through the two teams' minds at this stage? What's kind of the last-minute instructions that you give to the players and, and what's kind of the roles and responsibilities? Uh, it's uh, very important, I think, for the players to listen to the manager, listen to the captain at this stage. Uh, nothing new. Stick to the basics and the instructions they've received from the manager. Um, and, of course, yeah, play their best. I think that's the most important thing, play the hearts out uh, and uh, never accept a defeat really. I think that's really the key thing, just keep that in mind that whatever happens on the pitch, they have to go home with a win and I think that's really important in terms of mentality from the beginning. And also I believe you actually um, were part of the, the team that, uh, the delegation of Khudam Lemdia that went to the US and competed out there. How, how was the experience out there? And, and obviously off the back of that, some of the players playing today were involved in that as well. Who are the players that we need to watch out for? Uh, the closest one to me now here, you can see uh, the winger, Rian. Uh, seen him play in the US as well. Scored a hat-trick in the final against Germany when uh, the UK beat Germany in the final in the US. Definitely a player to watch. Uh, there are a few other players in the midfield as well uh, from the North team. Um, I think, yeah, for the experience from the US has been amazing, mashallah. Uh, we had a lot of youngsters, a very good combination of youngsters and seen a few senior players. And um, the games were very competitive. And the UK reached a final in the US in the missed international football tournament, Masru International Football Tournament. And Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah, they also managed to win that final against Germany and bring the trophy home. So the two teams, you can see the trophy on the screen as well there, just the, the winners that they will receive. The two teams just lining up there. Um, being led onto the pitch by, by the referee, Danish Nasha, and uh, the two linesmen. Just a reminder as well, it is a, a, a very much a family orientated affair today at Islamabad. We've, we've got the tuck shop, we've got small games for, for children as well. So it's really nice just to you know, get everyone involved. And, and it's a real pleasure actually for, for the players to be able to compete um, here. So what we were discussing um, initially as well um, during the first match is just the conditions. It's, it's quite hot today. It's uh, 24 degrees. I believe it feels like 26. Um, what, does, do you think that plays a part in, in the thinking of the tactics for the, both the teams today and how they approach the game? I think, yeah, it, it does. Um, 
but also I think they will be focusing on hydration before the game, during the game, and probably try to keep, you know, one of the teams will try and keep the ball as much as they can and not making the unnecessary runs if they, if they can avoid that. But I think there's a very good mixture of youngsters here um, who could probably play this game twice. <laughs> so we're looking forward to that. Just waiting for the officials now coming up with the teams. Yeah, like you say, I think possession is king, um, especially when it's hot. Um, it, it, but there's not a lot of time, so it's a 20-minute, a half, 40-minute game. Um, I think both teams will, will want to leave everything on the pitch and give it their all. But I think ultimately, um, the the team that keeps the ball will, will, will probably have the advantage. We have both teams lined up for a picture before the game. And so the sub approaching the teams. Southern Majlis UK, um, just greeting the players going through the teams, being introduced by the captain, Raji Ahmed. And now the Barcelona United um, being introduced by the captain, Rafi Khan. Teams getting their picture taken now, just before the match starts. So you can see the way Morocco have lined up here with um, Badr up top, Waji in the middle, the captain, and Taha and Labib down the wings, and Danish and Eden um, at the back. So it's, um, it's a solid team, a 2-3-1, and uh, MK Barcelona, again, playing the same formation, 2-3-1, uh, with Aman, Reis at the back, Rafael Junaid and Lodi in the, in the midfield, with um, Ali up top.
So the two teams now just having the toss, um, the two captains getting briefed by the, by the referee. The referee, Danish Nasser. With the final instructions provided, it looks as though Barcelona will be kicking off. And we're off. Barcelona starts strong, just passing the ball across the back line. But they're providing the pressure there for Morocco and wins them a throw in. Very good, very good pressing there from, from Morocco. But they're on the move near the middle of the pitch, looking for options, but loses out. Mark cuts in onto the left, lays it off to Rayan. Rayan just can't find the angle for the shot, has to go back, and they recycle very well, recycled by Barcelona there. Barcelona keeping the ball very, very well, but great pressing as well from Morocco. Janet just loses out on the ball there. Harris on the ball, great tracking from Janet. Well read by Harris. And it goes off for a um, Barcelona throw in. Good pressure, good beginning from Barcelona, good start, keeping the ball. Great pressure from the, the captain there, Reggie, Reggie Rahman. We seem the captain for Barcelona throwing it in. Junaid with a great ball there, just spraying the ball out to the right wing and back from Amar. Junaid looks up outside of the boot. Oh, great pass then. Rayan just couldn't get it under there. Very, very close. Great attacking play from Barcelona. That's a half decent chance there. Bit of experience there from Danish, just getting the um, goal kick for his team. Taking some of that pressure off. Barcelona have started really, really fast. Oh, poor touch there. And straight, Barcelona on it straight away. Well played. Oh, Reyes couldn't keep it under control. Good defending. They are there with a brilliant piece of play just to win the ball between the two defenders. And Barcelona slowing the game down slightly, just keeping the ball, passing it about between them. The defender there just telling the boys to calm down, I think. Brilliant play from Barcelona there. Janaid sprays it out to... to Oh, and a wild, wild effort there from Wasim, the manager. Goes off for a, for a goal kick. The eyes lit up there. <laughs> Morocco goes short to Danish. Danish looking for options, can't find anything, gives the ball away straight away in Junid. 
Rayan with a chance on his left foot. Oh, what a goal! Great a goal. great finish by Rayan Hussein. Rayan Hussein, great goal. Gives Barcelona the lead, 1 0. I mean, Barcelona really started off really, really fast here. Yeah, they started off straight from the off. They put a lot of pressure on them, been keeping the ball, pressing high. And that's been paid off. First goal to Barcelona. Great goal there by Rayan, Rayan Hussein. Very, very good. And I believe he was a key player for you in the in the US as well. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely, he was. Junaid on the ball now, just can't keep it in, and it goes for a throw into Morocco. Reggie Ahmed, the captain there, will step up to take the throw in. Good defending there from Barcelona. We see him on the ball out to Junaid. You know, back to a seam there, just, just playing the ball around in the defence. They're very, very comfortable on the ball, it has to be said. Not really being phased by the Moroccan press, but it's very, very brave and then just smashed away. If in doubt, kick it out. <laughs> <laughs> clear it, absolutely good clearance. No nonsense in the back. As much as it's nice to see the good, pretty football, sometimes it is just safest to, to kick the ball away. Absolutely. Danish now trying to get his team to attack. Intercepted there by Basim Hussain. That's better from Morocco. Looking for the options, running down the wing. Harris on the ball now, number 23, looking for something. Oh, maybe one too many steppos. That's Rayan Hussain on the ball, but out to Basim. Basim Hussain looking for options. Ball getting stuck in, in between his feet. Oh, out to Junaid. Junaid, pass one. Good run from Aman, good run from Aman and to, to Rian. Oh, very strong tackle there. Referee strong gives challenge. a foul. Who's the left wing? Uh, this, this is Reis. Reis. Aman in the middle. Rian Hussein will step up to take the free kick. He's already scored one on the left foot. It's within range. Steps up. Great goal there. What a goal. That's the second goal by Rian Hussein. One with his left foot. Now a free kick with his right foot. Absolutely brilliant. What a strike that was. Beautiful. And here's the replay of that, because that was absolutely amazing there. Great connection. I don't think the keeper could see the ball yeah, actually no clearly for through the, the keeper. wall. Went through the wall. Great strike. On target. Great goal. Morocco need to find a foot in this game at the minute. They, they can't seem to keep the ball at the moment. And... Um, Rayan Hussein with an absolutely brilliant goal there. That's his second of the game. Good pressure by Barcelona again and straight out by Morocco, but straight to Barcelona again. And then Barcelona seemed to have a lot of time on the ball, just seemed to really dominate the game at the minute. Morocco looking uncomfortable in the back. Wajir well, Rahman, the captain there with the throw in an early throw, looking for Badr Nasser. Badr Nasser tries to turn, but unfortunately gets tackled. And Barcelona break. Aman on the ball again, looks for a shot. Just, Just wide. wide. Great effort there on the left foot. Goal kick there now for Morocco. 
looking long there for Badr Nasser, but his touch lets him down slightly, and that allows Barcelona to just nick in, and they're in on goal again with a shot. Oh, oh. just wide. Great move there from uh, Barcelona again, just very, very quick. Again, they're very quick to the ball, put, put Morocco under pressure, nicks the ball off him, and then they're on straight to goal. Great pressure again from Barcelona, not giving them in. They're in again with left foot. Oh, it hits the post and comes out. I think the occasion's getting to Morocco a bit. They just need to settle down at the minute. Again, they're under pressure with, with Barcelona attacking. This time the ball goes out for a goal kick. Let's just have a look at that replay as well. What a strike that was on the left foot. So close. Again, keeper was beaten just off the post. Keeper plays it out to the right-sided defender. Oh, great, great move there by the defender, keeping the ball. A bit of composure from Morocco. Finds Badr in the middle. Badr turns, looking for help, and just a bit overplays the pass again, just on a different wavelength, really. The, the winger should have been a bit quicker there. Or maybe the pass should have been a bit... Lighter, I don't know what your <laughs> thoughts are, Kadus, on that. Yeah, I mean, they just, uh, Morocco just needs to calm down a little bit and stop playing the ball around. Especially in the back, they need to keep it simple. They're inviting pressure at the back, so they just need to pass the ball much earlier. Start playing ball, really. Great ball there by Juned. Oh, straight into the pass of the left right winger, but, but couldn't make most of it. Brilliant pass there from Janir, that in the centre midfield there, absolutely spot on. Morocco start early, but again under really under a lot of pressure. Rayan Hussein wins the ball. And again, Rayan in for his hat trick on his right foot. Squares it unselfishly. And goal. That's gone in. That's a goal. That's 3-0 uh, to Barcelona. Again, Rayan Hussein, great pressure. Let's look at the replay as well. Just squares it and I think that might have been an own goal. If I'm not mistaken, that, that was an own goal. <laughs> yeah, VAR would, would be good. But 3-0 down now, Morocco. They need to fix things. They need to change things around because the game is really getting away from them now. Just have another look at that. because the I believe it takes a, either a massive deflection or that's an own goal. Oh, yes. Yeah, it does. It was... Was a big Morocco in here with a chance. Oh, but they just couldn't squeeze it in. Out to Harris. Great defending from Barcelona there. Last ditch. But finally, Bar Morocco showing some uh, some spirit, some 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 attack. Wedjou Rahman with the corner here. Floated in. Danish with a great call, but unfortunately just couldn't connect. Probably the first times we've seen of Morocco really um, peppering the, the, the Barcelona goalkeeper, though, which is hopefully signs of, of more things to come. Barcelona on the ball again, just passing it around, slowing the game down, playing the game at their own pace. Back to the keeper, keeper out to right back. Great little dummy there with Gio Rahman on the ball, plays it out to Haris on the right wing. Haris looking for Badr in the middle, but just can't get there and goal kick to Barcelona. Much better from Morocco now. Finally getting up the pitch, starting to play ball, getting a few chances. Hopefully they'll put, put one or two away. Barcelona just passing the ball around again. The great cross in, looking for Rayan. Just goes off for a goal kick. Race just couldn't get the ball under his control there, otherwise he would have been in for a one-on-one yeah. -on -one with the goalkeeper. Goalkeeper looking for options. Playing short again from the, from the back. Wadjur Rahman is actually, see they've made some changes. Morocco, he's dropped into defence there. The captain plays a long ball looking for Badr, but just over hit again. It's just not coming off so far at least. Goal kick for Barcelona. Oh, 
Oh, a bit over hit, but Wasim manages to recover. Out to Janir, plays it out to the right back. I think the biggest difference between the two teams at the moment is Morocco have really tried to go route one, which they haven't had much success with, where Barcelona have really built the play up and, and passed it around a lot better. Yeah, we talked about this before the game as well, just trying to keep it simple, stick to the basics, and then build your game and, and finish off the chances, and that's what Barcelona has been doing. They built the game from the, from the back, kept it short, nice and tidy, and just cleared it when, they, when there was no, nothing on, really. Jenaid on the ball now, looking for options, plays it out to Rayan, back to Jenaid. Beautiful ball, out, sprays it out wide, outside of the boot. Intercepted there by the captain, Rajiv Rahman, and he's in. Badr Nasser, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. What a save. Should have done better there, really, Badr, but great, great effort, nevertheless. What a chance. You don't get many of those one-on-one. -on -one. Let's just have a quick look at the replay as well. Look at that. Such a great chance, unfortunate there. And it's uh, a throw-in for Morocco now. Keeper comes out and just gets there. But the referee blows for a free kick to Barcelona. Just signs of Morocco coming into the game a little bit, causing Barcelona a few problems. I think they just started off a bit too slow. Barcelona again, just playing it short, looking for options. Rayan on the ball again, looks to cut in. Just hits it wide this time on the right foot. Goal kick to Morocco. Intercepted there by Janed to Rayan. Back to Janed, looking for options, just passing the ball around under pressure from Morocco players. Oh, beautiful skill there, through the legs of number 11, but Morocco managed to get back in time. Keeper looking for options again. Decides to go short this time to Danish Nasser. Oh, sorry, Danish Tahir. Danish trying to just bundle his way through, but not having much success there. I think the frustrations actually seem to be getting to Morocco slightly, and, and they can't let that happen. Still, they just need to stay calm. There's a. There's uh, another half left. Stick and stay in the game. Keep your heads cool. Play the basic game, really. Just have a look at that replay as well there. You can see it's quite a collision. He just... Oh, and a bit of a drag back there from... Morocco in with a chance here. Lays it off to Badr. Oh, straight to the keeper. Unlucky there, but great play from Morocco getting in there. Morocco win the ball again. Lays it off to Badr. Badr fake with his right. Lays it off to Haris. Haris just can't get past his man there. Well, well defended. Pushes him out wide. Morocco there now with a bit of time in a great position. Can they get an angle for a shot? No, they can't. Just didn't really connect with the ball there. But well done. Good. Good pressure from Morocco up there. Barcelona couldn't go get out of their own half there. That's much better for Morocco. Barcelona do seem to have dropped off a bit, and I think that's just allowed Morocco to get back into the game a bit better. And Barcelona just have a lot of time on the ball at the, at the back, and that's the biggest difference. When, when Morocco have the ball, they, they don't seem to have the time because of the pressure that the Barcelona are putting on them. But... But it's just not the same with Barcelona. Oh, great turn there. Brilliant turn. But well tracked back by Badr Nasser there. Look at that, using his strength. Look, and it's just that final pass that's letting them down. Barcelona sometimes a little bit too cool, actually, at the back. Wadjur Rahman now on the ball. Plays it out right to, uh, again. The pass, it's that final pass. It was just too heavy. 
goes off for a goal kick to Barcelona. Barcelona again, now it's just a walking pace for them, just yeah. passing it around, and then a great ball to Reisen in one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Oh, great save by the keeper there, just got there in time. Brilliant find by, by Janet though, just to pick race out that really, really quality football. Great pass. Morocco just needs to really put more pressure on Barcelona there, as soon as Barcelona starts playing from the back. We saw that as soon as Morocco put some pressure on there, they start winning the ball up there and get a few chances. That's really important for Morocco to carry on now, continue putting more pressure on Barcelona. The referee just having a word now with, with the players, I think just calming things down. It's important to remember that the game needs to be played in good spirits. Just have a look at what happened there. Just a collision, I think. I don't think it's anyone's fault. Both players had eyes for the ball there, but they just collision into each other. The experience, the captain just having a word with, with uh, Reis there, just telling him what the expectations are. We talked about this before the game as well, that obviously we have a South and North team. But we've seen over the years, Alhamdulillah, the experience and the quality of football has increased and improved over the years really from both south and north over the country and we're seeing a lot of youth and a lot of youngsters coming through from the Khudam Football League so alhamdulillah it's great to see that everyone's here watching the game and enjoying the hopefully enjoying a day and there's also a tuck shop around and we can see a lot of families here to watch the game Jure Rahman, the captain on the ball there, just trying to make things happen for his team, almost trying to force it, but it's just not happening for Morocco. Again, Barcelona just kicking it clear, clearing their lines, not taking any risks. They're 3-0 up. They're in control of this game. Danish Tahir on the ball now, plays it to Wajir Rahman. And intercepted by Barcelona, Rayan plays it through to race. Oh, great interception there by Danish. Barcelona start again, Junaid with the, with the ball in the middle of the pitch, plays it out to the right winger. Out to the left winger, Rayan. On the same. And Reis with a beautiful turn there. Plays it back out to, to Rayan and the party tricks are coming out now. Trying to beat his man. And again, they go back, they, they recycle. That's Barcelona do that very, very well. And, just keep control of the game, keep control of the ball, just keep possession, knocking it around. Great ball to race. Race trying to get the shot off. Oh, great save by the keeper there. A bit far out. Danish Tahir looking for Haris. Well read by the goalkeeper there, the Barcelona goalkeeper. Ali Abid just plays it out to Asim Hussain. And that's just Danish Tahir, no nonsense, clearing his lines. And the game finishes 3 0 to Barcelona. Going to hand over to Usman Bartsab for. Um, watch out for the Acha.
So we're here, it just finished the first half of the game. Uh, Morocco are down by three. I'm joined by Zishan Bashir and Kudus Mateen Sab. It's good to put a face to the voices. These were your two commentators. We're just going to ask your opinion in the game. How do you feel? I mean, it's pretty one-sided if you look at the um, score, but it's not that Morocco haven't had their chances. No, like you say, Morocco have had chances. And, and we were actually discussing this before the match started, that whoever keeps the ball will probably have the advantage in this game. And that's just Barcelona have done that very, very well. They've kept the ball, passed it around and cleared their lines when they needed to and, and obviously taken their chances. Morocco have had their fair share of chances as well. It's not been so one-sided, but like you say, they, they haven't taken their chances and, and ended up 3-0 down. Kudus, what do you feel Morocco need to do to get back in this game? Uh, so Morocco, yeah, as, as Sean was saying as well, has had two really good chances. Uh, in order to really get into this game now and try to actually win the game, they have to put the pressure on Barcelona. They have to press, press them high up on the pitch uh, and then just go for it. Uh, they're 3-0 down and they just have to go for it now. There's one half left. If they don't put that pressure, they're going to invite pressure on. So for me, they just need to really, really... Uh, get onto the game and put that pressure up there from from the beginning. Yeah. Zishan, if you're in the Barcelona camp now, what's being said now in the huddle? Do you feel? I think they don't change anything. They just play their game. They're playing really, really well. They all look confident. They they all know how to play football. So just keep the ball, slow the game down, play at their own pace, and they don't need to to get involved with with uh, with uh, Morocco too much. You know that Morocco, I'm sure, will go try going long, try going short. Barcelona just stick to their game plan and do what they need to do. They're going to see this game out without any issues. I mean, it was. I don't know if you guys were there for the KFL final South. Morocco were down two 0 in the final, and they came back and won in penalties. So they they are used to being in this position. It's just about whether they. Have have the resolve to get back in this game. I believe the second half is about to begin. We have to send our commentators back behind the desk and behind the mics. I will now join you for the second half of the KFL Super Cup final. For them, it's make or break now. They have to start taking them. Yeah, the uh, Morocco is has, is used to this. They have been in the South KFL final. They were two 0 down, and they came back in that final as well. So I think they have an experienced team, and they have the capability to actually come back into this game and and maybe even win it. So hoping for some really good football now, some really good pressure from Morocco and a competitive game in this half. Final instructions just being given to each other by, by the players, and getting ready, getting themselves ready for the, for the second half. So if you were in the, the dugout of, of Morocco, would you change anything? Would you, you make changes, personnel changes, formation changes, or would you... I mean, they, they actually did make a small change. They put the captain down. Uh, Vaji is now playing on the right. You see that in the defence. And that made a big difference. He's intercepted and playing the ball. Now they feel more comfortable from the back. Vaji got the ball on the right again. Intercepted by Ryan. He's in now with his right foot. Brings it onto his left, looking for options. Up, lays it off for race with a great effort just over. And Barcelona, again, it's the same. It's that pressure that they, they seem to do so well. And Morocco can't seem to handle it at the moment. Morocco with a chance here, but ju just again, just too much of a bounce for them. Wedgie with the interception. To Re Real with a... Oh, misses his chance on his Just right foot wide. there. Great Unlike chance. him as well. He's already on two, Rayan Hussein. Just couldn't get that third for his hat-trick. Let's just have a look at the replay quickly as well. You can see, just, yeah, just drags should've. it slightly wide. Should have really put that away. That would have sealed the game. 
But yeah, Ahmed there, the captain on the ball, plays it back to the goalkeeper. Morocco just, just trying to get on the ball a bit more, I think. Wedgie on the ball there in the middle of the park. Again, overplays the pass, and it's not the first time I've said it. It's, there's a lot of passes that have just been overplayed by Morocco. They've been a bit unfortunate. No, it's good to see at least they're taking a few more risks now, trying to go for the game in this half. They have to, if they really want something out of this game. Junaid coming deep to pick the ball up in CDM position as well. has been spraying out some really good passes today. Finds Brian this time back to Junaid in the middle. Sprays it out to the right winger. Back out to Junaid in the middle. Barcelona really, oh, brilliant link up play, but just couldn't come off that time. Great interception by Danish. And that's Hardis now running down the right wing for Morocco. Great Squares run. it on his left foot. Oh, unlucky. Oh. Great attempt there. And that would have made it 3 1. And it changes the game. Absolutely. What well, a great chance. You, Morocco have to start taking these chances, though. Wasim Hussain there just plays it into the middle. Let's have a quick look at that replay as well. Great one by Harris down the right wing and then squaring the ball just onto the left foot. Very unlucky, very close. Barcelona on the ball now. Real Hussain plays it to Reis. Reis plays a little one-two. Takes the shot on. Oh, and just over there. Corner, I believe, to, to Barcelona. Again, Barcelona's really quick on the ball. Straight away, no time wasting. One, two touch, pass, and they're straight on to goal again. Just have a look at this replay here. Just works the shot, and it was actually a very good save by the goalkeeper as well to get fingertips to that. Junaid with the corner now. Junaid was saying. And it goes out for another corner to Barcelona. Played there by Danish Tahir. Great delivery in there. Rayan trying to work space for the shot. Lays it to Reis. Reis just over. Great effort there. Could tell he really wants a goal in this game. Goal kick for Morocco. Trying to look for Haris on the right wing. Just couldn't get, get control of it. Race now with a bit of space. Again, a shot and just over. Seems to find himself in these pockets. So much, so much space to have shots. Morocco really need to close him down a bit quicker. Otherwise, he will get that goal. And Badr here, through on the left wing. And goal kick now to uh, Barcelona. We'll see him saying on the ball now in defence. He's looking for options. Out to the left wing, Rayan Hussain. Rayan plays it back to Wasim. Wasim to Junaid in the middle. Great pass there, just spraying the ball out to the right winger. Great pass in there to Rayan in the middle now, looking for options. Brilliant feet there, so quick. Harish just got back there, brilliant tracking. And it goes out for a, for a goal kick to Morocco. Just really brilliant link-up play from Barcelona there. Just very quick feet and, and very sh short, crisp passing as well. Ball goes out to Danish Tahir, outside of the foot. Looking for Badr, he's in now. He turns. Oh, he has to drag himself back. Looking for options. Lays it off. Great save by the goalkeeper there just to stop the ball from coming into the, into the area. And uh, Morocco win a corner. Brilliant play from Taha there as well, just to get into the position, to work that position. Wajir Rahman, the captain, taking up, stepping up to take the corner. Floats one in. Great clearance. Ah, there seems to be a head injury here. 
the, medic, the medics running on the pitch. Let's hope he's okay. Let's just have a quick look at the replay there. You can see that Danish Tahir, I believe, running in and just clashes heads. Yeah, both players were going for the ball, but no one wants to see that. Yeah, it looks like it's Junaid. Yeah, he seems to be okay. He's just getting up, having some water. It is 25 degrees today here at um, Islamabad, but it does feel a lot hotter, actually. I was just saying, it feels like yeah. 27, 28, but... If you're playing out there, it definitely feels like yeah. 35, so <laughs> running their hearts out. But it's, it's good to see that Junaid is up again, having some water and no serious injury. And that's great to see as well, both players hugging and shaking hands. Barcelona playing short again. Just seem to have too much space up there, really. Even back everywhere, just a lot of space for Barcelona to run through. Intercepted there, Bawaji plays it out to Haris down the right wing. Haris running at the defence now, looking for his options. Little step over, cuts inside onto his left. Looking for Badr, Badr brings yes. it down and goal! Oh, great goal! Great finish there by Badr, finally coming off 3 1. Great run by Harris. Brilliant run. Runs down the line and then cuts in and looks for Badr. Let's have a look at the re replay there. You can see here Harris gets on the ball, runs at the defender, little step over, cuts inside onto his left and just picks Badr out. He brings it down brilliantly and goal. Very nice move by Morocco and, and, and it's a lifeline. Yeah, absolutely. This is this is really good. Morocco slowly getting into the game again. Barcelona there just beat the, the beats the press over the top to Junaid, who finds himself one on one, but Barcelona can't capitalize there. But it's just that one ball that seems to beat the Morocco press, and they're in trouble. So just need to be careful of that. Obviously, they do need that goal, but they can't concede. Wasim was saying there, just showing his experience. But, oh, great effort by Har He's in again, Haris. Oh, straight to the keeper, unlucky. He should have maybe squared that to Badr for his second, but he earned the right to take the shot on there. Wasim was saying, just, just um, misjudging whether the ball had gone off there. Badr with a bicycle kick. Oi. Unlucky there, great attempt. Brilliant effort. Yeah, good Seamus try, well them. done for Morocco. Much better, much better there now. Seems to come alive in the second half. Junaid is saying being pressured by Woji, the captain. The ball goes out for a, a bus, for a Morocco throwing, sorry. Woji Rahman looking for options at the moment. Plays out for Taha. Taha down the right, down the left wing. Cuts inside. Unlucky with the shot there. Actually, took a deflection, so it's a Morocco corner. This will be taken by Wajir Rahman. Only around 10 minutes to go, and, and you do feel Morocco need to take another chance. Floats the ball in. And Danish Thayer with a goal! Brilliant finish! Brilliant goal! Outside of the right foot into the top left-hand corner, absolutely superb. What a strike. And Morocco are right back in this game now. Barcelona 3, Morocco 2. Just like you were saying, Kudusov, you know, they're not used to... Um, they're not oblivious to being um, down in a game. They, they were 2-0 down in the semi-finals. They managed to muster up the courage to come back. Yeah. Can they do it again? Yeah, absolutely. 
Ah, oh, and Janaid with an absolutely brilliant goal there. Just beating three, four players and smashing the ball into the bottom left-hand corner. And 4-2 to Barcelona now. And you just think that's going to take some of that momentum away. Look at the replay here. Great celebration as well there. The passion, you can see it on his face. You just rewind that back and see the goal. Just beat. There's three players around him there, and he just figures that shot into the bottom-hand corner. Great goal. And no chance for the keeper there. Daha going long to Haris. Haris, unfortunately, can't bring it under control. Junaid there, looking for the pass. Intercepted by Haris. Haris down the right wing now, running down, trying to make something happen for his team again. But they just can't bring that ball down. And Reis now with a great touch. And he's in. Brilliant ball there. Just can't get to it. Keeper picks up. Danish Tahir on the ball now. Bringing the team up. With a poor pass. Wasim Hussain just able to get on the ball and bring it out. And he's on a run. Oh, that was a bit of a, a harsh tackle there. Yeah, Morocco playing with a lot of urgency now. Like to see that 4-2. There's still time to get a few goals in. Great pressure again from Morocco. Again, it's Harris on the ball. Just dealt with by Barcelona. Very calm, keeping the ball again. As he was saying on the ball now, lots of time. Plays into the middle. Great feed from Oman. Oh, to race on the right wing. Back to Rafi, captain, looking for options. Feeds it into race, but goes off for a throw in now. I think the players must really be feeling it as well now at this stage. The legs start getting heavy, it's hot. Great turn by Daha there, through the legs, unlucky. And Hardis is in, can he, can he make the most of it? Tries to get his right foot, but takes too long. Still on the ball, Hardis here, trying Great to make track something back happen. from Rayan, really. Coming all the way back from, from the wing to track back. Good opportunity, good chance for Morocco again. Corner now to be taken by Morocco, by Wadjio Rahman. Floats one in. Danish just can't get to it in time. Unlucky. Daha on the ball now. Just picks up a foul. And listen, we, this is probably a similar range to the goal that um, Rayan scored in the first half. Question is, have um, Morocco got someone who can do the same? Wedji Rahman stepping up the captain for Morocco. A big chance here for Morocco. They, they really do need a goal. It's important. Can he bring his team back into the game? Adjur Rahman with a strike. Just wide. Took a deflection as well. But I think it came off a Mor Morocco player. So it's a goal kick to Barcelona. Yeah, it was a deflection. Came off their own player. Janaid on the ball now, a lot deeper. Great turn there, and he's in down the right wing. Tracked by Wadji Rahman. Cuts into the, onto his left. Great defending there by Wadji. Barcelona take a quick throw on back to Rafi. Rafi being pressured now, but very, very good, very... Very calm on the ball. Sprays out to race, race down the left to Rayan. Rayan. Sure would want his hat trick as well. Let's not forget he's on two at the moment. Rayan cuts in and very unselfishly. And that's a save. Great save by the Moroccan goalkeeper there. And another effort by Janet that goes wide. What a chance. Just saved on the line. And then the follow up, Aman had a chance. Just puts it wide, really. 
That should have sealed the game. Let's have a look at the replay as well there. You can see, very unselfish. He squares it right on to the, to the striker who gives it back to him, but should have really scored there straight to the keeper. Rayan on the ball there on the left wing, looking for options. Plays it back out to Junaid. Junaid to Rafi. Rafi back to Junaid. Junaid plays it down left to, to Rayan. Rayan back to Asim. Yeah. Barcelona, Barcelona just knocking is, yeah. it around now. Yeah, just game management really at this time. Only a few minutes left. Oh, that was a very, very dubious tackle there. Double footed by Rafi. Yellow card shown to Rafa by the officials. Oji looking for options now in the middle. Plays the ball in and cleared by Janaid straight up in the air. Can race get on, on the end of it? Morocco just clear it out for a throw into Barcelona. Some substitutions being made now. Let's have a look at this yellow card. It was a bit of a strange tackle, I have to say, from Rafi. Very deserved yellow card. Barcelona throwing now, just looking for options. They go back to us. Seem the same. Reis has just come off for a Barcelona veteran. Very experienced player. Great turn there, but, but intercepted. And Taha now on the ball, plays it through, looking for Harris, but just can't get on the end of it. That's a throw in for Morocco, for Barcelona now, sorry. Simonsen just using that experience as well, just walking to the ball, taking his time, slowing the game down. Leon plays the ball to Rafi. Rafi plays it out to the right wing. Back to Rafi now, there's a lot of space, takes a shot on, just over. Great effort there. Great play again from Barcelona, out wide, back to the middle. A good shot, just off target, really. Referees just said two minutes of extra time added on now. Janir down the left wing, taking one. Look at the pace there. Great, oh, unlucky there. Great effort. Just see the pace down the left wing though, just Morocco couldn't cope. Just have a quick look at the replay as well. Just very unselfishly squared it and he had a lot more time than he thought, I think. Took yeah, I should have taken an extra touch and put it away. Great run from Janet again on the left wing. Janet with the ball. On the left wing, back to Aman. Aman goes all the way back. After this, of course, we we have the the main event as well coming up, the uh, national football tournament. Uh, for Khudam al Amdiya final. It's um, Betul Nur versus East region that we've got to look forward to as well. So stay tuned for that. Waji with the, with the ball on the left, left wing. Trying to find a fast, great ball in. Oh, great goal, great goal great there. Goal. Brilliant header by Harris. Good, good goal. Great ball. Was that Taha that played that in? Brilliant ball there. Floated delivery. And that makes it 4-3. Let's just have a quick look at the replay there as well. Brilliant, brilliant finish then. 
4-3, they're back in the game, but I d is there enough time? That's the question. Daha wins the ball for, for Morocco, but well tracked back there and won back by Barcelona. Morocco with probably the last attack of the game now. Playing it in between them. Reggie on the ball. Just gone out for a corner. Corner ball now. Last few seconds of the game now. Morocco with a corner. Can they do it again? Goal kick to Barcelona. It's really been a brilliant game here today. So close. I think Morocco's slow start really cost them, to be honest. They did find themselves back in the game, though. They, they, got into, they grew into the game as the game went on. Keeper looking for the long pass now, telling everyone to go up. Harris on the edge of the box, trying to find them a shot, can't get one out. Still on the ball. Oh, and it's just wide. Just wide, corner ball to Morocco, they're so close. Play it short to Wedgie. Wedgie goes all the way back. Morocco. Daha with the turn, fakes the shot, can't find the angle for the shot, brings it out to the right wing. In the middle to Badr on the strike, what a strike, unlucky there. And that's the end of the game. Brilliant game, very well played, very close. Morocco unfortunate with the 4-3 loss against Barcelona. Very good game from both teams. <laughs> are we live okay we're back and that game did not disappoint the final score i believe was 4-3 to uh barcelona like we said morocco were used to being down they were down in the kfl south final and they brought themselves back into the game and they won today again i'll start with uh Wedgie and um Badr. you guys were down uh, 3-0 you got yourself back in the game what you feel went wrong I think it's those three early goals they scored. We were always chasing the game. I think if he prevented that, I think it would have been a different game. It's just that we were always chasing. 
Whether it was really encouraging to see as a manager, you never gave up, you pushed your team to the end, even to the end, you could have equalised. How is it for you, your experience as a manager for this team? Yeah, yeah, it's been great. Um, you know, we, we, we've shown that we never give up. Um, that's something we've done in the KFL South. We were, we were down in the final then, we fought our way back. Unfortunately, today, we come up against, you know, a great, great opposition and they managed to maintain and contain us. And, um, yeah, well, just generally really happy with the performance. The boys put it all in today. Everyone gave 110%. And, yeah, couldn't be more proud of the boys. No, I think everyone uh, watching back home as well is really proud of you guys as well. You should keep your heads up. Moving on to our champions. Uh, Rafi, your prediction was right. I'm joined by Omar also, who was managing the team from the sideline. Congratulations, Mubariko. How was that game? Was it what you expected? Yeah, it was everything that we expected from the, from the boys. We expected to win. We know the quality we have in our team. Um, four three was not the result we were actually expecting. The first half showed our quality, I think, with the weather situation, uh, whatever. But they managed to fight, fight it back, which we very respect to them. But we, we brought it back and showed showed our quality in that second half as well. And Rafa, as a captain, as you're leading your team, you're three 0 up. You see the opposition's got two goals back. Even at the end, you see if they won one chance is what they needed. How do you drive your team to make sure that you finish victorious? Like Kamal said, we know we have the quality. It was just getting that onto the pitch in the first half. We showed it. We panicked a little bit. We got a bit complacent. They got back into it. Um, but I knew, I knew if we played, if we played our game, you know, we'd be comfortable. So I wasn't, I wasn't worried. It was just to stay calm, keep playing our football, and we'd, we could have scored another three, four at the end. But credit to Morocco for, you know, not letting us do that. So if you look, just give a bit of background in terms. Obviously, you lot are from Darul Uman is the mosque in Manchester. Uh, most of your players are brothers and cousins. So give us a bit more kind of background just about your team and how often you lot played regularly. So we obviously it's mostly our cousins and brothers, but we've been playing together all our lives. So we have that we have that bond, that chemistry on the pitch, and you can see it here. Obviously, a few few of the players that integrated with us, a bit more experienced players such as like Rafi Ali, bringing that experience and that maturity and that discipline to the team was because with a very bunch of talented players. I think that that com combination really really helped us. Yeah, and uh, as a region. I'm sure now we're going to go to the National Football Tournament final. You guys were there as well. You guys gave a really exciting performance. How are you lot going to prepare next year to make sure that your region is actually in the final next year? You know, I have to be honest, a lot of how our preparation has come from how we prepared with the, our international team, Al Furkan. And there's some players that are involved from that. We've incorporated that into regional weekly football. So it's just going from here, really, playing together. We play every week, once or twice a week. So it's just building on that more competitive games. And last question I asked to the manager, who was your man of the match? Of, I know it's difficult, especially why everyone's related. And you're <laughs> no, but honestly, who I was think, your man? I of think match? I think the whole team played played really good. The goals were mixed around, so it wasn't just one player. But I'll give it to my brother Rian. He scored the two goals and he showed what what he's yeah. about. No, absolutely. Like I said, that final did not disappoint. Barcelona coming up victorious. They won the game 4-3. We're now going to go to a short break and when we come back, we will be streaming the live final of the national football tournament between Betelnu region and East region. Make sure you join us straight after the break. हमें खुदाम कहते हैं 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 हमें खुदाम कहते हैं
My name is Sayed Al Dalamid. I'm the younger brother of Sayed Taleh Ahmed Shahid. In 2007, uh, Taleh Bai formed a seven side football team with his local school friends. He was still studying his GCSEs at the time. And he did it initially as a means to continue playing football, stay active, to socialize with his friends. Um, but they stayed and played together for years, and it grew into something much bigger. Eventually, um, we were inviting people from the team to come and attend Jamaat events, whether that was a sports event or something external. And Alhamdulillah, because they knew us through the team and got to know what we're about as Ahmadi Muslims, um, they were open to it, you know, it opened their hearts to, to Ahmadiyyat and attending um, the masjid. I know several players who are here today, including James Sutton and Adam Bruff, they're just uh, doing an interview with MTA. They attended uh, a table tennis league that Dali ran. Uh, for several years at the masjid, they would come on a weekly basis, um, and and many of them have attended uh, other Jamaat events as well. Um, unfortunately, we hadn't played together in ten years. Um, you know, people's lives got in the way, family, work, university, things like that. Uh, but since the Shahadat of Talibai, um, the guys came together and said we need to do something in memory of Talib to show um, our love and respect for him and. Um, it just so happened we arranged this tour. This was the only weekend that all seven of uh, out of the eight original players could do, and it just so happened to be at the same weekend of the NFT and KFL finals. So we were very blessed to be able to come here and bring the boys here. They had a full tour of Islamabad and got to use the uh, fantastic facilities. And once again, you know, um, we've kept that link. Uh, alive and con will continue to do the bleak through this team, inshallah, and uh, keep Dali's legacy well and truly alive. Assalamualaikum, welcome back. Um, so we have for you now the National Football Tournament 2023 final, East versus Betul Nur region. Both teams just kicking the ball about, getting ready, just to run through the teams quickly. So for Betul Nur, we have Asher Ahmed in goal. We have Adil Ahmed and Mubin Majid at the back. Rehan Khan, the captain in the middle. Sujahat Waraich and Sabah Sardar down the wing with Dala Majid up top. And for East Region, we've got Umar Loan up top. We've got Adam Ahmed down the left wing. Mustafa Tahir, the captain, down the right wing. And Jabril Hakim in the middle. The two centre-backs, we've got Anil Tahir and Hassan Akram um, with Samar Ahmed in goal. Just the last few words being said by both the teams before they they run out. And um, just to give you a, a little bit of background as well for the Majlis Qudam Alemdiya National Football Tournament um, 2023. So, so it was a seven-a-side tournament that was held um, in, in Watford Football Club training ground in St Albans. Um, we had around 30 regional teams competing against each other over the two days. Um, so there were 20-minute matches, there was group stages, playoffs, playoff groups, round of 16, quarter-finals, semi-finals, and now we're here today um, for the two teams to compete in the final. 
Um, with regards to the tournament format, so it was six groups consisting of five teams each. Um, it was a round robin um, with each team playing each other once, and then the first and second position of each group making it into the knockout round. The playoffs um, consisted, of, consisted of the fourth and fifth position team of each group playing into, so going into the playoff stages, and then the winner of the playoff stages promoted to the playoff group. The playoff group, um, so the third position of, of group stages makes it into the playoff groups, and then the winner of the playoff groups made it into the round of 16, um, and then from there on it was just a normal knockout structure. Um, uh, a fun fact, Gdul Saab, so Beto Noor actually um, finished fourth in Group B, so they lost three matches and, and only won one. Um, so which meant they had to go into the playoffs to get this far, meaning they actually had to play um, an, three extra games on the Sunday um, just to make it to the final, to th three more games than East played, um, which is quite impressive in itself. Um, and, and yeah, they defeated teams such as West Midlands in the quarterfinals, Beto Subhan in the semifinals. Um, but again, just showing grit and, and real heart to get this far, um, which is yeah quite impressive in itself. Yeah, <clears throat> but to know we had they have a lot of uh, experienced players with them, players who have been playing in a, a lot of tournaments. Some of them also went to the U.S. for the Masru International tournaments and played even there. Um, so in terms of East, um, they actually finished first. They breezed the group stage. They were in Group F. They won all four of their matches, um, losing none. Um, they made it through to the round of 16, made it straight into the knockout stages um, and defeated Mehmood 1-0 in the round of 16, defeated Yorkshire 1-0 in the quarterfinals and then defeated Masrur 2-1 um, in the semifinals to, to make it to the final. Any particular players, um, Kudul Saab, that you feel we should be looking out for, for, for either of the teams that you're aware of? Yeah, I mean, Betunur um, has uh, quite a few very good players. Uh, they, um, in last year's KFL, Kudan Football League as well, they had uh, Shujat Vraich, um, very good player. Won the uh, KFL with his team Denmark last year, and he's also playing today. A player to look out for definitely. They also have Rehan Khan, who's the captain, the skipper, very good player, very experienced player, probably one of the senior ones out there today. Definitely looking forward to to a really good game. On the east side, you have Mustafa Tahir, also the skipper for East, a very very good player. I played 11 aside, 7 aside in different formats, in different tournaments, won a lot of games. Definitely a player to look out for, never gives up. With him, you have Anil Tahir as well, uh, centre back, a very experienced footballer, a very experienced defender. And I think he will, uh, he's, he's probably carried the game, probably carried the team with him, with Mustafa. So we have um, Fezan Varaj now, the captain of uh, Mukami region um, and the actual holders um, of the National Football Tournament 2022. Um, just going to place the, the trophy um, on the mantle there for the, for the pictures. Um, Mukami uh, region di didn't quite make it to the final this year. They, they actually um, ended up losing on um, penalties um, in the quarterfinals to uh, Beto Subhan region. Um, very ho hotly contested game as well, that was. We've got Fazan Varaj coming with the trophy, the reigning champion from Mugami. He's placing the trophy on the pitch.
and the two teams now being led out by the referee Danish Nasser and the two match officials. Um, It's interesting the the four players that you mentioned as well. Um, so Sujahat Rai, Rahan Khan, and then for East Mustafa Tahir and Lee Tahir. They also represented the UK in the international um, football tournament that actually occurred here as well. So so they are a, a yeah. team of or players of great quality and players that play together or are usually used to playing together as well. Two teams just lining up for the for the pictures now. And the team captain, Mustafa Tahir, just being greeted by Amir Sahib UK and intro introducing the rest of the team. Now Rehan Khan, the, the captain of Betul Noor, just introducing the rest of the players of Betul Noor. Two finalists now just having their pictures taken. I mean, it's an amazing experience and honour just to make it this far to compete in the final. Um, it's a great event here today at Islamabad as well. We, we've got, as you mentioned earlier, we've got the tuck shop, we've got games for children, and it really is a nice family affair for, for everyone to be involved in. Yeah, absolutely. We have the Mubarak Mosque behind us. And if you're just joining us now, the scenes you can see now. The football ground right outside Mubarak Mosque. Finally, it's cooled down a little bit as well. You're just joining us. <coughs> this is the uh, national football tournament final match 2023. Seven aside football tournament, which was held at the Watford Football Club training ground. Regional teams participated. And the final is now taking place here in Islamabad, UK. The 
two captains being called in by the referee, Danish Nasser now, just to be briefed, given last, um, last words of advice and, and obviously to do the toss. Any predictions, Lusa? I think this will be. I think this will be a very competitive game as well. We saw in the previous game, uh, Morocco coming back. But I expect both teams, both the Nur and East, to be very, very competitive from the beginning. They're used to this format, seven aside. Both teams have been playing a lot of seven aside. And very, very good players on both teams. It'll be interesting to see who will really edge edges it in the end. Samar Ahmed for East, uh, usually he is their striker, has been playing striker before and has uh, had to sacrifice and gone in goal this time. Looks as though um, Berta Noor um, will be kicking off the match. Salah Majid will, will kick us off for Beto Noor. And it's off. Rahan Khan on the ball. The captain plays it back to Mobin. Bean sprays the ball out to the right and very well intercepted by Neil Tahir there. The ball goes off for a corner to Beto Noor. A great start from the beginning. Straight on it. Sujahat now will take the corner for Beto Noor. Oh, very impressive corner out to Mubin. Rehan Khan just misses there with a header very close. Very fast start from Beto Noor. Very good. The corner was hard and kept it low. Gave them a chance to really get it, get it down and get a crack on the target. East on the ball now. Mubin trying to find a thread to pass through, but intercepted. Rehan Khan on the ball. Plays it out right to Sujahat. Sujahat onto his favoured left foot and a strike. Well blocked there by Anil. Mubin on the ball now. Sprays. Oh. Slightly wild effort there, just, just hit over, hits the ball for a goal kick. I think both teams just getting used to the dimensions of the pitch as well. Summer plays it out to Anil on the left. Back to Summer, and I guess that's the advantage, as you mentioned, of having a striker in goal is that he's good on the ball. Mustafa Lahir now beats one player, opens itself up, plays it down to the right for Jibril, cuts inside. Intercepted by Rahan. Oh, and that was a back pass. I believe the keeper picked it up. And so that should be an indirect free kick to East. You know, just a bit of a misunderstanding from the Beto Noor team there. Asher just picked the ball up, I think, unknowingly. Yeah, great opportunity now for East.
East with a great opportunity here. Mustafa will lay the ball off and it's a shot. Well defended by Beto Noor. Cleared away by Adil Ahmed. And Summer picks the ball up. Summer looking for options here. Plays it to Neil Tahir. Neil down the line to Sabah. Well intercepted by Adil. Beto Noor on the ball now, just passing it around, playing well. Mubin finding Rehan. Great touch from Rehan. Falls to Shujahat. And that's a Beto Noor throw in. To Mubin. Mubin looking for options at the back. Just clears the ball down the right to Shujahat. Shujahat first time to, to Tala. Tala with a tackle, gets tackled there. Sabah now with a great ball, but just no one in the middle. Yeah, both teams seem to be on it now. The weather's cooled down, playing much faster. It's good football. Neil on the ball now. Great interception. Fulstadel can't do much with it. And Neil plays the ball down the left wing, running down the left wing now. Plays it to Jibreel. Just took Mustafa with it. Great turn there, very unlucky. Moves the ball, trying to figure a shot out. Mustafa just can't get a shot off and overplays the pass. Goal kick to, or throw into Beto Noor. Mubin there with a poor pass, but Adil covers up well. Neil Tahir now on the ball in defence, looking for options. Finds Mustafa. Mustafa beats one. Beats him again. Just can't find a player with the cross. Neil Dahir now on the ball. Plays out to the left winger. And to his right foot. Can't get the shot off. Oh, great effort there. Brilliant effort. Good run took, from Sabah. Took a deflection and, and hit the crossbar. Let's have a look at the replay here now. That was a great run, wasn't it? He cut in onto his right foot and really hit the ball well, really connected it with it well. Actually, brilliant defending from Mubin there, last ditch stuff. Is it United? Is that his name, Sabah? So Jahat on the ball now. Straight to Anil. Anil on the ball, takes his time, looking for Mustafa, who mistouches it. Mubin's able to clear. He's just keeping it simple now. Anil with the ball, looking for an option. Plays it out wide. Great turn there, and he's in on running down the, the left wing. But great, oh, th through Adil's legs. But Adil was fouled there. Great play by Umar alone there just to get in, but Adil used his body very, very well just to get in front of him and make it difficult. Mubin there looking for options now. Free kick quite deep in their area. Yeah, he wants to go long. Mubin goes long. Great shout by the keeper there, and he holds on to the ball as well. Out wide to Adam, but a bit bit too too heavy the pass couldn't couldn't control it a deal with the ball into Tala Tala down the right wing intercepted by Adam Adam plays the ball across to Anil Anil to JJ Mustafa with a great turn and, and he's brought down there I think he knew what he was doing there he had to take one for the team and bring him down Yeah, we talked about this before the game as well. Experienced players. Mustafa has just given East a chance here on a dead ball. <laughs> Hassan with the ball plays it across to Jibril. Jibril turns and a strike just over. 
great first attempt there. Had a bit of space and thought, why not have a go? Yeah, yeah more time than he really probably thought he had. Good, good try. Good move from East. Albin sprays the ball out, but well intercepted, well read by East there. Adam picks the ball up, but can't keep it in. And that'll be taken a quick throw in by Bertul Noor from Tala to Sujahad. Sujahad loses the ball to East. Anil again, that experience showing very composed. Can't thread the ball through. And Bedunura through here with the advantage, but can't make much of it. I think he stopped there thinking it was a handball, but ref didn't give it. Yeah, good refereeing, playing the advantage. Mustafa with a great turn there. Lots of space, picks Umar out. Umar with a chance, just can't get a good connection. Unlucky there. Big chance for East there. Should have been 1-0. <laughs> Sujahad takes on Umar, and Mustafa comes through to cover there. Great tracking. Sujahad with the throw in for Bertha Noor. Looking for Rehan, brings the ball down. Now will be an East throw in there, just a bit of miscontrol from Bertha Noor. Good game so far. Yeah, very, very good tempo. Both teams giving it everything. It's difficult to really say one team's been dominating. It's, um, it's pretty even so far. Yeah, that's what we like to see. Both teams going at it, not holding back. They've got subs on the bench. Coming up to 10 minutes into the first half. East just give the ball away there for a poor throw in, but picked up by Mustafa, can't make much of it. Rehan Khan, the captain on the ball there, plays the ball out to the left wing. Back to Rehan, who finds Sujahad. Sujahad trying to, trying to work an angle for a shot, but very good tracking by East. And unfortunately, the attack just fizzles out to the keeper, Samar Ahmed, who plays it very, very quickly to Mustafa. The great turn there, he beats his player and he's in. East have to capitalise here. Oh, and that's a foul. Just outside the box, looks like. There's a yellow card there for, for Mouveen, the better new centre-back. And that'll be a free kick to, um, to East region. Adam that will take the free kick. Big chance here for East. Unlucky there. Great strike, but just across the face of the goal. Someone really should have been running in there just to hit that in. It's a goal kick to Beto Noor. Mubin really looking to go long. I think they're making a substitution here. I think that's Saba coming off. He goes, goes long straight to the keeper and East just pick up possession arguing between themselves at the moment. Anil plays it out to the left winger, Adam. And well intercepted by Mouveen there. Yeah. Mouveen seems to have stayed down. I don't think there was much contact that we saw anyway, but he stayed down, seems to be in pain. The medics are running on. Yeah, just a bit of a late challenge, really. Have a look at the replay here. Didn't seem to be much in it. But Nothing vicious in it. Good interception 
by Mobin. Yeah, very good interception, read that well. Gives the teams a chance to hydrate as well, get fluids on board. Both teams have made some substitutions as well, get some fresh legs on. Well, Bean is up again, I think. He's probably going to looking for the long ball again. And he clears that away with, finds Mustafa, flicks it on. Sujahat intercepts. Sujahat on the ball now. And the referee gives a foul to Imbedo Nul's favour. It was a bit of a rash challenge from Mustafa there. Yeah, I just caught him a little bit. Sujahat was already, had already passed him. This is probably Sujahat's range as well. We've seen him score goals from distance before. He does like to shoot. Mubin also standing over the ball. Sujahat that steps up. Great strike there, but very good, well defended by, by Adam from East. A deal to take the throw in for Beto Noor. Sends it in. Rehan. Great play there. Great interception from Mubin. On the left now, left winger tries to find Rehan in the middle but just can't do so. Great interception and that's a clearance from East. And that's, that will um, fall for a throw in for East. Throw in's taken quickly to the goalkeeper who plays it back. Looking for the long ball and well intercepted by Mobin there. And that's a throw into East Region. Moving up the field. Hassan with the throw in. And great tackle there from Mobin. Very, very strong. And that's another throw in for East now. Just creeping up the field. Unfortunately, can't make more of the throw in, and that just trickles out for a goal kick to better move. Mubin again, is he going to look to go long? Yeah, it seems like, seems like he's looking for Rahan again. Flicks it on, but unfortunately straight to the keeper. Summer with the ball now. Plays it out to the left winger, Adam. And a great interception by Adil, but he can't keep it on. So that's another throw in for East. East are getting a lot of throw-ins at the, at the moment. Anil to take the throw in to Adam. Back to Anil. And that's intercepted. Goes off for a throw in to Bertha Noor. Bertha Noor plays it to Rehan. Rehan can't make more of the, of the chance and that, that goes to another throw in for East. Anil Dahe to take the throw in now. To the goalkeeper, Summer. Great pressure apply, being applied by Berto Noor. They're not letting East out, but they managed to find a way out and they're on the break now. Playing it to the, to the left winger, Adam. Oh, just over hit the pass. Good chance. And Jibru here taking one and two players on, crosses it in, very unlucky. Hassan now to find, Mustafa in the middle, 
just over hit again. That runs off for a throw into Beto Noor. He's just showing signs here now, getting into the game, growing into the game. But Rehan. Shujahat just trying to find his man, and it falls to Beto Noor with a chance. Go! And that's 1 0. What a pass by Sujahat Waraj there. Bit of a mistake from the from the from the East defender. <laughs> and a brilliant finish there. What a goal. Just to have a look at the replay, they just fell under the player's foot and they slotted it home. Are you back on? He's there to, to cross the ball in. He's, he missed control there. Can he bundle it in? Mubin there, a clearance off the line. Wow. That was a really big chance for East there. Great defending by Beto Noor. East was looking for a very quick response after that goal. <laughs> we'll be in there going long again. Mustafa with the ball on the right. Mustafa on the right. Looking for options. Being marked by two players here at the moment. Yes. <laughs> and the ball falls for uh, East throwing. Mustafa's going to take it early. And well read by Mubin there again. Brilliant piece of play there. Falls to Mustafa. Great defending by Adil. Oh, on the half volley there, very, very difficult strike, and from that distance, it's going to be tough. But he took it on, and it sailed over the bar. Yeah, the game's open up for both teams now. I think we're just coming up to half time. One minute left. East with the ball now, just passing it around. Adam on the ball, finds Jibril, looking for options, loses out to Sujahad. And the ball goes out for an East throw in. Anil takes the ball early to Mustafa, who's challenged and is fouled. That's a free kick now for, for East in a, in, a, in a good range. Shooting distance. They came close before from a free kick not too far out. Yeah, again, well done from Mustafa. Just keeping the ball, winning the foul up on the pitch. Very good position for East now. Favours the right foot shot as well. You know, Beto Noor have two players on the line along with the goalkeeper as well. And the ball just goes over there, unlucky. Well, we just finished the first half of the National Football Tournament final. Normally, nerves play a, a big role in a final, especially where you're playing in front of a crowd. How do you guys feel? I mean, you guys were commentating, and Faraz, you have joined us as well. How do you feel that first half went? 
Yeah, no, it's a really good game, really tight. It's difficult to call. I think um, it was a lucky break. I think uh, East just, it, it, I think the defender tried to clear it and it got underneath his foot and, and uh, Betonur made the most of it. And, and that's football. That's 1-0. Kudus, who do you feel has played the better football in this half? Uh, actually, you can't do them apart. They've both been playing really well. Uh, I do feel that Betonur has had the ball more. Uh, but East, East have had a few chances which they could have put away. Uh, both teams playing really well at the, at the moment. They just need to finish them. East had a few chances they could have finished, really. That's, that's, that's what is what, what's separating them, really, at the moment. And for us, two questions, two-part question. First part, if you're in the Betten Rule camp now, what are you kind of discussing? What's your tactics in the second half? I would say keep going. Uh, I think it's a very even game. It's a very fast-paced, physical game. Um, the weather plays a really good role. It's nice and cool now. So it's a perfect opportunity for both teams to go and express themselves. Football is a game of fine margins, and uh, there's a mistake from the East Central defender. Um, and I think this game will go neck and neck all the way to the end, and this could be just a very, very close game. Um, but I'm hoping that Battle Noor uh, keep going, and East also, my former region, uh, do well and try and come back with this game. I've got to ask you all three the questions. What's your predictions now? Looking at you've seen one half. One nil up, what do you think, how the game would end? Uh, I hope it doesn't go to penalties because my children have to go to school tomorrow, but uh, I think it's going to go to penalties. Uh, I think that uh, Betonu might edge it if the, if the Sujat or someone turns up. So 2-1 to Betonu, that's my prediction. 1-1 one, one penalties. 1-1 one, one penalties, okay, well, that's what our commentators think. We're now going to go to a very quick break and when you join us after the break, it will be the second half of this National Football Tournament final. हमें खुदाम कहते हैं 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 If you're joining us again, we're watching the National Football Tournament 2023, Betunur versus East. Second half about to kick off. At the moment, Betunur is leading 1-0. It's been a great game so far, Zishan. Yeah, no, great game so far, evenly poised. Um, not, not, not a lot in it between the teams. 1-0 to Beth Nura at the moment. Really good atmosphere here as well in Islamabad. Very good to see families and children and everyone here joining us from different regions. East to kick off here. JJ on the ball, sprays the ball out on the right wing. But unlucky then will be never present, able to just clear the ball away for Berta Noor. So Jahat on the break now. Berta Noor looking dangerous. Great strike there, but very well defended by Anil. 
Kuna for Beto Nur. Yeah, both teams on it from the beginning again. Showing real urgency in this match. Only 1-0, the, the game can go anyway now. Suja had to step up for the corner for Beto Nur. Cleared out, falls to a deal for Beto Nur. Very well challenged by East there. Finds Rehan, just can't get the ball under control. And that's a throw into Beto Nur now. Rehan decided not to take the throne in the end, leaving it for Adil Ahmed. It's quite a long run up for a throne as well. He's going to fire it into the box. And it's just above everyone into the keeper's hand. Summer plays a very quick ball out to Mustafa. Mustafa, Mustafa with a great ball there, but great tackle by, by Mubin. And Berto Nur managed to just get it away for a throw in. Yeah, very well done from the East keeper there. Spreading the ball very quickly to Mustafa. Mubin doesn't seem to be getting up. I don't think anything happened, but he doesn't seem to be too happy at the moment. Just taking a, seems to be taking a knock there in that challenge. And he's up, seems to be okay. Just the fatigue kicking in as well. As we approach the second half. Another throw in for East to be taken by Anil. Plays it to Mustafa, who managed to wriggle away from a couple of players but can't find anyone in the box. And it's a breakaway again by Sujahat. Managed to skip through two players, looking for an option. Finds Rehan onto his left foot, plays it back to Sujahat. Plays the ball to Sabah, who takes it on his left foot, but just wide. Have a look at the replay as well there. Mustafa just skipping through the two players, weaving his way through, unlucky. Just couldn't get the shot away properly. It's cleared away by Berta Nuna. He's just trying to get that goal, to get back in the game again. Mars with the ball, works a shot, plays a square. What a save by the Beto Nur goalkeeper. Absolutely amazing save there, point blank. And it was just a pure reflex save. And that was a ch such a big, big chance for East to equalise there. Sujahat on the ball now in the middle of the park. Trying to find an option. Brings it back onto his left foot, but can't do anything. Adam breaks with the ball for East now. Plays it out to the right winger. Cuts inside onto his left. Bursting through the middle. East with a few options. Finds Adam onto his right foot. And great, great defending by Berto Nur there just to get back in time. Berto Nur, you feel just holding on here at the moment. East really, really probing for that goal. Just going to look at a replay here for that previous chance that East had. Great bit of footwork from Anil there to play it across to Mustafa, who wriggled through two players and just squared the ball. And again, what a save by the keeper. Corner now for, for East. Adam just waiting for the players. Plays a short one to, to Mustafa, plays it back to Adam. Adam trying to beat his player but can't get past him. East throw in. Throwing for East now. Fires it in and Mubin again gets his head on it. Falls to. And it's a goal! Goal for East! It's an own goal. I believe that came off Mubin. Very, very unlucky there. Just couldn't move out the way in time. Let's have a quick look at the replay here as well. You can see straight from the throw in there, he just fires it in. 
And it's really just a snapshot, half shot, half cross, I'd say. And it very, very unlucky there by Mubin, just deflected in. Great pressure from East, building up again, putting pressure on them, and finally got the goal. Yeah, you do feel it was a it was a goal that was coming. They had a chance earlier yeah, as well. They should have yeah. scored. East with the ball again. And it's a corner to East. Oh, great effort there by Adam. Unlucky. Very, very close. And that would have put East 2-1 up. Just wide and it's a goal kick for Bethany. Yeah, Bethany just switched off there. East took it early and a great chance. Do feel East. that there's a bit of complacency creeping into the Bethany side now. They, they need to get their heads back in the game. Bethany are just making some tactical changes now. Great defending by Anil there on that long ball. Misjudged by Dylan and Easter in, but just can't get away with the ball. Mersh plays the ball wide, but intercepted by Bertonou with a bit of time now with Sabah on the ball. Corner. That's a corner for, for Bertonou. Well, that was a great break by Bertonou there. Sajar to take the Betanu corner from the left side. Straight to Rahan, just Rahan couldn't get the connection and the shot off. Will be to take the throw in now for Betanu, looking for options, plays it to Sajar. Wins another throw in for Betanu. Just as we predicted, Kadus 1 1. <laughs> Could it be? So Jahad wins the ball back for Betun Noor. Must Mustafa on the break plays it through. A great pass across the goal, and Adam with a shot. Well defended by Betun Noor. They're defending for their lives. Great chance again for East. Let's look at the replay. Great cut in. The, these long throw-ins are really causing issues for Bertonou. The previous goal came from the similar, similar position. They just need to deal with in the defence, really. Clear it if they have, if there's nothing on. Mustafa with a poor touch there for Sujahad, plays it back to Sabah. He feeds it through. But intercepted by East there. Down to the left wing to Adam, plays it back into the middle to JJ. JJ looking for options. Plays a very simple back to Anil, just keeping, keeping the ball East now. Great defending by Bertanur again. Referee's just blown a free kick in Bertonou's favour. Mubin to take it again. I think he's going to probably be looking to go long. He's looking for Rahan again. Goes out wide. Good defending again from Anil. Sajar on the ball. Great ball there, across the face of goal, but no one in the middle for Bertanur. Summer takes it early to Anil, plays it short. Anil looking for options. Plays it out to the right to Hassan. Hassan plays an early ball through Anis with a chance here. Square to Mustafa. 
Well, so beats one, beats two. And JJ plays it back to Mustafa. Mustafa trying to tool, just trying to trying to turn, get on a shot on goal, but just no space. Still with the ball though. Maybe kept the ball for too long at that point. East with the throw to Mustafa. Miscontrols it. Rehan picks it up. Plays it across to Sujahad. Sujahad just. Referee's given a foul there. East aren't too happy with that decision. Yeah, I think the referee just felt that it was in the back. Can have a quick look at the replay as well. Yeah, maybe it was yeah. slightly in the back there. It's already, already gone. Mubin on the ball, plays it long to Rehan. Just can't get his head to it. Easily picked up by Summer, plays it out to the left wing to Adam. Running down the wing now. Great run by JJ, I didn't find him. Oh, unlucky. Very unlucky there. I feel that the game has opened up a bit more now. Yeah. Both teams having more chances. Good pressure from Mustafa. JJ plays it out to the left wing to Adam. And referee's blown here, I think, for a free kick to East. Yeah, he's pulled it back for a free kick on the first challenge there. We've already seen goals from this range from free kicks. Could this be another one? This is a good chance, this is a good opportunity. The angle is right. Probably walking through a routine here. Mustafa lays it off. Good strike, but goes off for a, for a free uh, for throw on, sorry. Long throw in again. Hassan knocks it on. This time into the keeper's hand. Keeper plays the ball straight up in the air. And Mubin plays it straight up in the air as well, I think. I don't know if this is tactics or clearance. <laughs> clearances. <laughs> Great turn there by the number 11. Beats two and is brought down, but referee says play on. Mubin there finds, finds a deal on the right with a lot of space. Plays it to Shujahat with a shot. Great save. And again, defended on the line by East. Now it's East, East's turn to break. East on the counter again now. So it's a really end-to-end -end game, isn't it? It's so even. Very competitive, very good game. Both teams at it. Around five minutes left of game time. We've got another injury here. It was a bit of a challenge from Mubin. Adam, the number 14 for East, seems to be down. The medic team's running on. Seems to be in a lot of pain at the moment. Yeah, with five minutes left to play. 1-1. One, one. Teams might be thinking of the penalty takers. Yeah, that does start to creep into your minds. Not long to go now, does it? Is that something you'd already have pre-planned? Gudul's coming into a, a game like this, or is that something where you just kind of assess the situation on the day and see how players are performing and then make that decision? No, I would expect uh, at this level for both teams to have the penalty takers already decided. And given the games are very competitive here, they would have probably thought that this could be a situation where they will have to take the penalties and the lineup is ready. Well, still, still a lot to play for. Players just using the, uh, the break as an opportunity to get fluids on board. Only around five minutes to go, so really is a case of giving everything you've got now. And Summer, the goalkeeper, plays it short to a nil. Bertunul starting the press. 
plays out to the left wing Adam seems to be okay now back to JJ plays it back out to the left East just couldn't couldn't work the move there and better and all start breaking and a big clearance from the goalkeeper there well read East on the ball now in the middle of the park, looking for options. Decides to drive with the ball down the left wing, pulls it back. Looking for JJ in the middle, just can't find him. JJ very strong there. And a save by the better middle goalkeeper. Big gap in the middle now. And the referee getting involved as well. I think he was feeling a bit. <coughs> feel like he wasn't involved enough. So. <laughs> Not sure what. Beto Lassana, I believe, are just going to kick the ball back to East. I don't know. Beto Nour, sorry, yeah. Right, so Jahat is just going to. Some plays a long ball looking for Mustafa. Just can't get there and it goes off for a goal kick to Better Nur. Only a couple of minutes left to play. We'll be in to take a long free kick again, uh, goal kick again. Looking for Rehan. You can't keep the hold up. Mustafa flicks it on to JJ. Well read by Mobini, who just sees the ball out there for another throw in for Betul. Um, Betul Nur. Betul Nur throw in, yeah. Great play by Bert Noor there. Brilliant tackle from Hassan. Back to Noor throw in again from the left side. Zilev is going to take it. We're going to go long into the box. It's been quite effective. Saw East score from a posi similar position as well. Pulls to Suj. Sujahat, oh, very close there. Just wide. That was such a big chance there. Great chance for Betanur to seal the game. Only with a couple of minutes left to play. Mustafa on the ball in the middle of the park now skips past one and is brought down and the referee says foul to East. Yeah. Just a very tactical foul from the skipper. Yellow card for Rehan Khan. Saw the danger there. Sujahat with the ball now on the left. Sujahat runs past. past his player, bursting down the left wing. How much extra time? How much extra time done is the There's one minute of extra time to be played. Another throw in for Better Nur to be taken by a deal. Fires it in. Great header by Anil there. And Mustafa on the break. Falls to Mustafa again. Tries to square it, but just can't get it through. And that's a free kick to Better Noor. Yeah, 
Bettino very lucky there with the interception. You can see um, Bettino has made a tactical change for the penalties. And Mobin has ah, yeah. So they're preparing for the penalties now. Rehan flicks it on. Great save by Neil there. Bertelnur on the ball again. Battling well. But that's a throw in for East, taken by Hassan to Adam. Adam looking for options, plays it back to Anil. Neil with a great ball to Mustafa, but intercepted by Rehan there. Rehan on the run now, being held back by Mustafa. Rehan staying down, doesn't look too good for him. And let's just have a look at the replay there. You can see he's all over him there. That's a tactical foul. I think he knew what he was doing at that point. Yeah, he saw the danger early on. Both skippers going at it. Rehan doesn't look... Looks to be in a lot of pain at the moment. The medic's just assessing the situation. And I think it's just... The, the game has taken its toll. It's, it's been very competitive and fast-paced, I think. A lot of uh, counter-attacks back and forth from both teams. Both teams trying to get that goal and just trying to game manage after that, but just haven't been able to put away the chances. Great opportunity for Sujat. Raj to take this free kick on the right side with his left foot. On his favoured left foot as well. Oh, brilliant effort there and that's it. It will go down to penalties, just as we predicted actually. <laughs> Great game, great spectacle, really, really good effort from both teams. And I think they can actually be proud of themselves just to, for the effort and, and, and everything they put in this. So uh, the team's now just preparing their players for, for penalties. Um, so it's, it's three penalty takers and then it will go to sudden death. Um, it's been like that throughout the, the whole tournament. So that's how it will stay. Any predictions, Kadus? Put you I mean, on the line now. Yeah, we talked about this before. We did have our predictions and it was likely that it will, be, it will go to penalty shootout. And uh, it seemed like the teams also knew that, and that's, they made a few tactical changes. Put Mobin in goal. See the better new players there just doing their dua. Well, 
Would you step up? Would you take one? Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> There's uh, no doubt about that. I will. <laughs> I will step up today if I could. <laughs> Wind back the years. <laughs> Referee is just uh, trying to get the penalty shootout going straight away. Just to inform everyone as well who's made it with us to Islamabad, inshallah, dinner will be served um, after the final session with Amir Sahib. Looks as though um, Mustafa will be taking the first penalty for East Region with Mubin in goal. And he's skied it over. I think the pressure just got to him there. He's usually quite reliable in these type of situations. Yeah, I think he just didn't get his head down on it. Didn't get the shot properly, didn't connect. So you have another look at that, just go straight over. I think he went for the top bins. Jahat Quraish now to step up, left footed penalty, slots it home, sending the keeper the wrong way. Great penalty. Number 11 stepping up now. Nuruddin Hakim now to step up to keep East in the match. Keep a full concentration. And a great save. A brilliant save by Mubin there to keep Beto Nur in the tie. He just read the shot and went for it. Was not a bad strike for He went early as well. He was off his line. He went early and just read it. The keeper himself stepping up now. He's been stepping up. And he punishes that. And that's and that. Betul Nur have won. It's a very, very hotly contested final, but Mubarak to uh, to Battle Noor. Great penalty shootout from both teams. If I can request the teams to please make their ways to the red carpet near the stage and please be seated in your teams as quickly as possible. Jazakallah. So there you have it, Betel Noor have won the National Football Tournament Final 2023 in a penalty shootout. Mubin really stood out, he saved one penalty, but generally during the game as well, he put his body on the line and Betel Noor were victorious. Betel Noor winning the tournament after a number of years, but both teams played well, it was a big occasion, and essentially what divided them was the penalty shootout. But we're now going to go to the final session. We start the formal ceremony with the recitation of the Holy Quran. And I request Talat Sayyan Sahib to come and recite a portion of the Holy Quran, please. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقال لهم نبيهم إن الله قد بعث لكم إن الله قد بعث لكم طالوت ملكا قالوا أنا يكون له الملك علينا ونحن أحق بالملك منه ولم يؤت سعة من المال قال إن الله استفاه عليكم وزاده بستة في العلم والجسم والله يؤتي ملكه من يشاء والله واسع عليم. The verse recited before you is from chapter 2, verse 248, and the English translation is as follows In the name of Allah, the most gracious, ever merciful. And their prophet said to them, Allah has appointed for you Dalut as a king. They said, how can he have sovereignty over us while we are better entitled to sovereignty than he? And he is not given abundance of wealth. He said, surely Allah has chosen him above you and has increased him abundantly in knowledge and body. And Allah gives sovereignty to whom he pleases. And Allah is bountiful, all-knowing. Zakallah, event report, Abdul Rauf Lodi Sahib, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Awuz billahi min shaitani rajeem, bismillah rahmani rahim. Throughout the year, the Sayyid Jismani Department has focused on grassroots engagement on the local levels across the country and has organized various sports initiatives for Khudam, including football. Today was the conclusion of the national football tournament which follows the traditional format of regional teams competing to become the national champions. By the grace of Allah, 30 teams participated in the tournament this year at Watford FC training ground with approximately 400 Qudam attending. East region and Beth New region progressed to the final in Islamabad, which was played today. The level of discipline for a tournament of this scale was praised by the external referees. The feedback collected via the post-event survey also indicates that the players enjoyed the overall experience and that they were motivated to compete for a spot in the final purely to be close to Khilafat. In addition to this, in a drive to involve more Khudam, the Khudam Football League, also known as KFL, has been organized separately both in the north uh, and the south, where over 450 Khudam have been drafted to form 32 mixed teams. The new format promotes cross-gathered brotherhood, especially in the post-pandemic period. What has proven popular is the opportunity for each team to select their, na their own name, where the Northern Division selected from UEFA clubs and the Southern Division selected from FIFA national teams. Today was also the conclusion of KFL, where the winner, winners of the Northern Division, Barcelona, played the winners of the Southern Division, Morocco, in the inaugural KFL Super Cup Final. We also hosted 
a special exhibition match today between the Gents FC and MT International in memory of late Talib, <clears throat> of late Talib Sayyid Shaheed. But of course, the biggest highlight of the football season has been the fact that beloved Hazur, Mia Labi's helper, has graciously granted us permission to hold the final in Islamabad for a second year in a row. The Majlis is uh, ever so great, uh, grateful for the opportunity to be hosting such events in close proximity to Hazrat Khalifa Tul Masih, may Allah be his helper. May Allah always enable the Majlis to serve to the expectations of Hazrat Khalifa Tul Masih, may Allah be his helper. Amin. Zakla. Zakla, prize distribution, Danish Nasser Sahib. Um, we will start with the KFL Super Cup. Uh, can I request the, the whole team to come up? So we've got the runners up this year who are Morocco. So can I request the whole team to uh, come up and receive their medals? If the captain can come at the end. And the winners of the first ever KFL Super Cup were Barcelona United. So can I request the whole team to come up with the captain at the end, please? Moving on to the national football tournament, we'll start with the individual prizes. Uh, first of all, we have the top goal scorer for the tournament this year. Uh, it was joint between uh, two players. So we have uh, Hassan Ahmed from Betha Subhan and Jamal Mahmood from Yorkshire. Um, so I understand Hassan Ahmed from Betha Subhan is here. So if you can just come up and receive the trophy. So they, both, they were both top goal scorers on six goals for the tournament. We'll move on to the Golden Glove. Uh, this year, um, the, the goalkeeper is not, you know, his main position isn't a goalkeeper, um, but, you know, he did carry his team to the final. Um, they were unlucky in the final to lose on penalties. So can I please request Samad Ahmed from East Region to come up and collect the Golden Glove? So that's the best goalkeeper of the tournament. Barakalaulakum. <laughs> Moving on to the young player of the tournament, um, again from uh, East Region, uh, Jibrail Hakim, who's uh, only 15 years of age, and uh, you know again helped his team to the final. Unfortunately, um, you know lost out on penalties, but he's been you know outstanding young talent for the tournament. Barakallahu Uh, moving on to the player of the tournament, um, again from East Region. Uh, he's uh, twice the age, over twice the age of the uh, young player of the tournament. And uh, again, you know, he, he had a great performance in the final. Unfortunately, he tried to dink his penny at the end, which he shouldn't have done. Um, Mustafa Dahir. Uh, can I request the runners-up of this year's National Football Tournament East Region to come up uh, with the captain at the end, please?
And finally, uh, can I request this year's National Football Tournament winners, Beto New Region, to come up and collect their medals and trophies. Again, with the captain at the end, please. Zakala, Misal, and that concludes uh, the prize giving ceremony. Zakala. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa dahu la sharika lahu wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasulu amma baadu fa'uzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Respected Sada Sahib, respected Shama Sahib, and all the participants of this football tournament, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, including the ladies who are here today. Alhamdulillah, this tournament has ended, and I would say that both teams won, mashallah. Both teams had an excellent game. And somebody has to win, but the good thing today was that you played with good spirit and you showed professionalism, which is so important. Always remember that you're Ahmadi football players first, and therefore your conduct at these events should be exemplary. And I'm so pleased that, uh, alhamdulillah, you behaved in an honorable and a very respectful manner with love for each, each other. And that is the key to the success of this tournament. By the grace of Allah, I know that lots of people, as you heard the report that some 400 people participated in this tournament. This is great for the for Damlandia that they're producing such good players. I saw the standard of football today was, mashallah, extremely well. And I hope and pray that one day, inshallah, Lots of you will be playing for national teams, and the discipline that Amdir teaches you, inshallah, will carry you through to greater heights, inshallah. So may Allah bless you all. We are very blessed here that you're playing this final on this very blessed place where we have little Masi amongst us on this side. And it is really Allah's blessing that we have Khilafat amongst us, and he is always aware of what we're doing. He's praying for us, and he's always interested in finding out the activities that are taking place. So he is fully aware of the tournament today, 
and his prayers are with you all. May Allah bless everyone who got involved with this tournament. May Allah bless all the players. And I know some of you may have traveled long distances. I hope and pray that you have a safe journey home. Allah bless you all. Finally, I would like to thank the organizers who obviously have worked behind, behind the scenes to make this a successful event. May Allah bless them all. May Allah bless the, all the other organizers, the Sami Basri team, the MTA team, who have also come and given their time to make this a truly successful tournament. Allah bless you all. Finally, I would say that we are truly blessed that we have the institution of Khilafat amongst us. So all of you here today went and prayed behind Huzur Anwar. This blessing, never forget, is true Allah's blessing that you have been able to pray behind the Khalifa of the time. And this is only available to the Khudam in the UK. No other teams around the world would have this honor of being able to do that. So never forget that. Always remember that we, in return, should be praying for the good health and long life of Hazrat Amir Mu'mineen Ayyad Talab Nasiziz, that may Allah grant him good health, long life, and his family so that we continue to receive Allah's blessing through this great institution. Allah bless you all. Once again, congratulations to both teams. And I would say that in my eyes, both of you won today. Allah bless you all. Uh, will you please join me in silent prayer? Amin. Zakalabi everyone. Salaikum.